something of a national team. Yes, the interest is greatest in and around Toronto, but the Expos are gone. This is a nation's team, not just a city or region's team. Boy, this team has really captured the entire country, and very appropriate. It's their Thanksgiving weekend, which the nation is celebrating. Monday will be their Thanksgiving day. But yes, this uh, this is a team unlike the 92 and 93 teams, which were world champions, has really captured this country. Well, if they grab the wishbone today, what they have to hope for is that Marcus Stroman gets the better of Paul Hamels. Otherwise, they head back to the States down 0-2. Coming up, the lineups and the first pitch. Baseball is, first and foremost, a game. The great American pastime has long filled the days and imaginations of our youth. And whenever a faithful fan takes to the diamond, something happens that goes far beyond these white lines. For only here can a boy of summer dream about being a hero. Fall. On the mound for the Dodgers, Clayton Kershaw, the best they have. Postseason means the league's best players battling it out on the game's grandest stage. It is a precise and precious time of year when the leaves start to turn and long held aspirations come into full bloom. It is that magical season. Countless swings at the plate become walk-off home runs. An endless hour field of grounders turn into a rally-killing infield masterpiece. If you've ever put on a glove or dug in, Batter's box. You've seen these moments in your mind's eye. Now, a select few try to turn those universal dreams into reality. This is when every pitch matters. Our chance to revel in the very essence of baseball and in the beautiful nine inning grass stained pine tar covered heart. It's 
Return. Because at the end of the day, baseball is first and foremost the game. Yesterday's opener, they'll count on Marcus Stroman to get them even today. And what this team has done, as you look at John Gibbons, their manager, what you, this team has done after those successful years, they had the strike in '94, they had a hockey strike. The fans here lost interest in sport, particularly the Blue Jays, and this team has recaptured the support of the entire country. On the hill for them, Marcus Stroman. What an interesting story. A power pitcher, but a little guy by big league standards, 5'8 and 180. 24 years old. Born in Stony Brook and went to high school in Patchogue, both in New York's Long Island. 11 and 6 as a rookie a year ago. Then tore his ACL in the spring. He was thought to be done for the whole year when he was slated to be their opening day starter. So what does he do? He goes back to Duke, completes his degree in sociology, but all the while rehabbing like crazy and against all odds, makes it back in September, whereupon he goes 4 0 with an ERA south of 2. He would have been their opening day pitcher, except for the knee injury, so that's what the Blue Jays thought of him. He says he is not phased by big games, and perhaps, and he acknowledges this himself, be Perhaps because he's a diminutive guy by big league pitching standards and had been frequently told that he would not make it. He pitches angry all the time though he's an affable guy away from the field he pitches with a chip on his shoulder pitches with a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, gets a lot of spin on the ball. There's uh, Jeff Bannister boy oh, had a great visit with him. What a what a baseball life he's had 50 years old spent his whole career. In the Pirates organization, briefly as a player, one big league at bat, lifetime batting average a thousand. Yeah. He, he got a single up Dan Petrie in a game against the Atlanta Braves in 1991 and remembered every detail oh, of it. Ever. But coached and managed in the minors in that Pirate organization and then got the job after Ron Washington abruptly quit toward the end of last year. Here's a look at the Geico starting lineup. For Bannister's Texas Rangers. Delino De Shields, whose dad, of course, was a big leaguer, was two for four yesterday. He'll start it off. The on base machine, Shinsu Chu, will play right field and bat second. Prince Fielder, bouncing back after neck surgery, derailed him a year ago, hitting third. Mitch Moreland is in the cleanup spot. Elvis Andrews, the shortstop. Josh Hamilton, the 2010 MVP, is in left field. Rudnett Odor, big day yesterday, hit by a pitch twice, scored both times, and then hit a home run off David Price. Chris Jimenez is the catcher. And Hanser Alberto has to play third base in the absence of the injured Adrian Beltre. Six umpires. Vic Carapaza has the plate. Alfonso Marquez at first. Marvin Hudson at second. The crew chief Dale Scott at third. Left field line Dan Bellino, right field line James Hoy. Beltre 
a spectator hoping to play. The machine shift to Texas for game three. The Shields at 261. He's a threat to run should he reach. He stole 25. 2 and 0. Wow. That, that might be an early indication. As always, the three players, three people that have more influence on the outcome of a game are the two starting pitchers and the home plate umpire. And that pitch before that, with that late movement, I think it fooled Vic Carpaza. That was in the strike zone. He called it a ball. In the air to right, it sends Bautista back, way back, ball really kept him, and he can't make the play. The Shields is on his way to second, and he'll stop there. Got a glove on it, collided with the wall, couldn't hold it. Wow, some opposite field power by DeShields. It's a ball that you say it could have been caught, but you can't really say it should have been caught. Batista got turned around, had a long way to go, tried to look it into his glove, and once he hit the ball, it jarred it loose, and with DeShields' speed, gets to second easily. Obviously scored as a double. There's the South Korean, Shin Su Ju. Got a great second half. You're seeing his overall numbers. Got off to a slow start. Rangers improved by 21 games over a year ago when they finished last. Wound up 88 and 74 and won the West. <laughs> that one's in there, one and one. Talk about up and down. 2010 to the World Series, lose to the Giants. 2011 to the World Series, somehow on the verge of winning it all, lose to the Cardinals. Can't get past the wild card in 2012 and 13. Then last a year ago. Then back to first place this year. And in a year that nobody really expected. Everybody thought the Hamels trade was looking ahead to next year. So they're the surprise entry here. Now one of the question marks with Stroman early on was going to be his youthful enthusiasm that you talked about. And I'm sure Russell Martin. The catcher's job, as you see the deep breaths right now, will just to slow the game down. Deep breaths, take it easy, find your rhythm. And his 3 1 pitch <laughs> runs the count out full. Prince Fielder will be next. The Shields at second after opening the game with a double. It's tapped foul. Well, ideally, in the way the Rangers have been playing baseball, Jeff Bannister talked to us about that. Advanced runners, a lot of bunt hits, hit and run. Shoes first goal here, hit a ground ball to the right side and advance a runner. Another 3 2 pitch. And another foul ball that Martin couldn't hold. You know it's hard to believe you look at these teams playing so well down the stretch two best records in the American League over the last two months but each around August 1st was under 500 and each was eight games back in its own division then roared to the finish. And again Martin can't hold it and again. Shoe hangs around. You know, in modern baseball with the multi tiered playoffs, it isn't so much the season you've had, it's how you finish and how you arrive in October. Exactly. Not uh, who is the best team, but who's playing the best. You see the late movement on Stroman's pitches. That's why Chu is just able to get a piece of the baseball. Ninth pitch of the at bat. Hit up the middle and through. The Shields is around third. There will be no play on him, and Texas jumps in front. RBI single for Jin Su Chu, and it's one of the Lee Rangers.
Well, a well earned single. Fouled off a lot of tough pitches, and then that looked, I don't know if it was an off speed pitch or a breaking ball, but whatever it was, it hung right up there above Bell Tie. So he earned that base hit by fouling off the tough pitches prior to that. And now here's Fielder, who finished at 305. But perhaps more to the point in this matchup, he hit 343 against right handers. Only the great Miguel Cabrera, who was just a point better at 344, topped him in that department. And now, Stroman, as he's done with all three hitters, ball one, now ball two, and you keep giving this lineup hitters counts, they'll make enough contact to advance runners. And what they did yesterday, scored early, was take the crowd out of the game, and they're working on that again today. A big chopper toward the middle, and it gets by. Here goes Chu on his way to third. Goins could not flag it down. I guess it'll have to be scored ahead. It took a big kangaroo hop. It looked like he was going to be able to play it and get it out somewhere, but instead, runners at the corners and still no one out. Well, surprise, surprise. We talked about the great defense of the Blue Jays, but in fairness to Goins, as you see Chu scamper into third. This is a new turf. Early in the year it had a lot of bounce to it. And it plays very slow. And that last bounce on a normal field would have hopped to Goins about waist high. Instead that one hopped over its over his head. So the home field actually worked against the Blue Jays on that ball. And so now it'll be Mitch Moreland. In contrast to the Blue Jays with well over 200 home runs, Moreland and Fielder led the Rangers with just 23 apiece. <laughs> Ball struck. An ankle injury a year ago limited the veteran Moreland to just 52 games, and he had just two homers. Bouncing back this year. A run home, two on, nobody out. It's a fair ball coming to the plate. They've got Chu hung up, and then they throw it away. Why throw it away? And it's all unraveling for the Blue Jays here on the top of the first. Colabello came home. They had Chu hung up, and then they just botched the play. A rare mistake by Russell Martin. One of the things you want to do is run the runner back to the base from which he came. And I think Russell prematurely tossed the ball to Donaldson. Another look at it. Colabella comes to home. Now he's running him back. He throws it a little too quickly. If he keeps running toward third, he gets Chu in a position where all Donaldson has to do is catch the ball. Poorly executed. Fielder's choice, E2. 2 nothing, And still two on. Wow. Talk about a team who had had improved defense. You see Donaldson. Now Martin wants to throw the ball on the inside of the line, but he threw it too quickly. Donaldson still on the run. And the Blue Jays have dug themselves quite a hole, unable to make three plays that could have and some should have been made. The entire infield came together on the mound around Stroman. Now Andrew squares. And bunts foul. The Rangers, and this might surprise you, we're not talking about sacrifices, we're talking about bunt hits, led all of baseball with 39 bunt hits this year. Unusual for an American League team to lead the majors in that department. But that also means that when necessary, they have guys who can sacrifice. De Shields right at the top of that list, Andrews as well. And a lot of these attempted sacrifices, they're so fast that they even beat them out for hits trying to sacrifice the runners. Again. And it rolls foul. Josh Hamilton is on deck. There's the major league leaders with Dee Gordon up at the top and Eric Abar, Abar from the Angels in second place. Well, some discrepancy because we had the Shields with 12 bunt hits. Same number as Billy Hamilton, the speedster of the Reds. Well, take your pick. They're all up there. Yeah, a lot of uh, 
talking to the Rangers people a lot of the shields bunts oftentimes he tries to sacrifice he ends up beating the throw anyway and Andrews can do the same. Stroman's one two pitch tapped foul at the plate. Fielder is at second. Moreland is at first. The Shields and Chu have already scored. A big chopper. It's fielded at first. The runners advance, and there finally is the first out. Of the top of the first, as Colabello takes it unassisted. What a job by Elvis Andrews. He failed on two bunt attempts, but again, it's an example of the way these Rangers play baseball. They did it yesterday. Contact, advanced runners. Unusual to see that for an American League team and a productive out. And knowing that they're facing Cole Hamels, down two already, they're going to bring the infield in. Go halfway yep. at second and short because of uh, Prince Fielder being at third base. And again, the slow turf is a bit of an advantage because it does slow the ground balls down. That's toward the hole. Colabello flags it down. He has no play at the plate. And now they're going to get a double play out of it as Fielder is going to be hung up and tagged out. Now that's a smart play. Colabello looked at Fielder, realized that he had time to record the out on Hamilton at first, and Fielder wouldn't be able to do anything. Meanwhile, Moreland was running up his back at third, and he had no place to go. Boy, that gets him out of what could have been a disastrous inning. As it is, they're down two. Quickly. 
Down two before they take a swing. Ben Revere starts it for the Blue Jays. Those were his overall numbers. Rolls it towards second. Odor. Nice play. So here comes Donaldson. Barely missed hitting 300. Finished at 297. Led the league in RBIs with 123. And in runs scored with 122. Hit 41 homers and matched it with 41 doubles. Second, third, and fourth spots. Donaldson with 41 homers. Bautista with 40. And Carnacion with 39. Ripped foul. Yeah, and that ball's hit hard, but that pitch is in there by design. You saw the first pitch, Cole Hamels, low and away. Cut that pitch in on the hands. The only thing Donaldson could do with it is pull it foul. Now he's got a lot of room to work with with an outstanding change of pace. Shakes off a sign. Now he has the one he wants, and it's inside the Donaldson. Hamels has plenty of postseason experience. The Phillies made it to October every season between 07 and 2011. This is his 14th postseason start, a 7 and 4 record overall between the Division Series, the LCS, and the World Series. And he was, in fact, the MVP of both the LCS against the Dodgers and the World Series against the Rays in 2008 when the Phillies won it all. And you see his numbers in postseason play. Started out 0 2, now it's full. to deep left center a true cannon shot in game one yesterday here's Donaldson a moment ago and what an at bat after falling behind 0 and 2 good plate discipline and then finally gets a hitter's pitch three two pitch and another look at that powerful swing looked like it came in about five high over the middle and he returned it right up the middle Wide of first, and it stays in play where it's caught by Moreland. Things happening so fast, we only now have a chance to take a look at the Geico starting lineup for the Blue Jays. They had the greatest run differential in the majors, and it wasn't even close. They outscored their opposition by a combined 221 runs. They hit 222 homers, far and away the most in the majors, and scored nearly 900 runs. Again, no one else was close. Well, they got one negative stat out of the way in the first inning. Only 10 wins this year in which they did not hit a home run. And Donaldson already took care of that. Two and zero to Encarnacion, who was two for four in the opener yesterday. What 
It's interesting about these three home run hitters Donaldson Batista and Encarnacion Batista a little bit more of a chaser but these guys have great plate discipline make a lot of contact which is unusual these days for most home run hitters. Unusual when a guy who hits 35 to 40 home runs doesn't strike out well in excess of 100 times and Encarnacion only in double digits. When it comes to strikeouts, he hits one high in the air to center. The shields gliding back. It won't make the track, and that will put an end to the Toronto first. After one at the Rogers Center, the Rangers two, and the Blue Jays one. Cast is presented by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance and sponsored in part by Mercedes Benz. The best or nothing. So if you don't have a Mercedes, get a bike. And by Expedia, connecting you to the people and places that matter. Here's Ruth Ned Odor to start it in the second. And as you might expect, when your last name is Odor, close enough so that your nickname would be stinky, which it is. As in order. Yeah. I tell you, he had some game yesterday. Hit by a pitch twice, scored both times. And then when David Price finally gave him something to swing at, he hit it out of the yard. And made a few unbelievable plays in the field. Wow. Wow. A four pitch walk to start the second. Well, we saw it in New York earlier. Dallas Keuchel working the fringes of the zone. Home plate umpire has a big influence. You see Vic Carpazza looking in the Toronto dugout. Where was this pitch? See now, the strike zone tracker says outside, but with all Strowman's movement, I think what might be difficult for a home plate umpire when it goes through the strike zone, 
it might catch part of the plate. When Russell Martin catches it, it looks a bit outside. There's some depth to that strike zone. A lot of movement on Stroman's pitches. Throws the four seamer frequently. The two seamer even more often. That's why he has a high ground ball rate. Both of them in the mid 90s. The catcher, Chris Jimenez. Inside to him. See, the catcher is, I would guess, five feet behind a home plate, depending on how deep a catcher sits back there. So by the time he catches it, it could have gone through the strike zone, but at home it'll look to you like it's a ball. That one looked to Kyle Plaza like a strike. And if I were Russell Martin, and I'm sure they all have their game plans and where to sit, I would sit right in the middle of the plate. Behind the plate and just kind of glide one way or the other and give the umpire a cleaner look at it. Two and one. Yeah, these first uh, inning plus are already going to shorten Marcus Stroman's afternoon. Already at 32 pitches with nobody out in the second. Here's a chopper over the mound. Could be a tough play. They get the runner at first, but breaking all the way around to third and making it is Odor, who continues to distinguish himself in this series. Wow, great heads up base running. Everybody looking at the bouncing ball, and again, the hard surface in the turf. You see Donaldson to Lewitsky. Everybody converge on it. Odor picked up on that. Never hesitated. And advanced from first to third. When Donaldson broke toward the back of the mound, there was nobody covering third. He can't get back in time. Odor is in there. Advances two bases on an infield chopper. And again, it's an example of baseball when you're sitting at home or sitting in the stands, kind of a slow-paced game. Things happen in a hurry. As soon as that ball's hit, if you don't anticipate, you're not going to be able to come up with that. There uh, looks like they may. Are they going to challenge whether Donaldson tagged Odor and he came off the bag briefly? Slight difference in the postseason. Each manager has two challenges during the first seven innings, and then it's up to the crew chief whether to acknowledge a request for a review after that. So we'll get a closer look at it. There he makes. Contact with the bag. Keeps his hand there, it looks like. See, I think when Donaldson tagged him, he had his hand back on the gang on the bag. If the tag had happened a little sooner. Amazing that now the umpire has to call that in actual speed. We get a chance to look at it four or five times. The reaction in the background is the fans are seeing it on the uh, Board up in center field. You know, I've said this to you before, Kitty, during regular season games. It is the rule. It's the right thing for Gibbons to do. Unless and until they change it. But this is not the sort of play that instant replay was designed to correct. There's nothing here to correct. For a hundred years, the guy has been safe. Yeah. What's wrong with it? It's designed to correct egregious errors that would change the course, especially of important games like postseason games. But it, you know what managers will do, as you said, they have two challenges. They have a right to to try to do it. And obviously, in this situation, if they could take Odor off third base, with oh, yeah. one out, and it, it looked like it was very difficult to tell from the angle whether he actually brushed him with the glove. While he briefly was off the bat, right there. Well, the call is upheld. Yeah. Not enough uh, evidence to overturn it. See John Gibbons mentioning right now, pointing to home plate. They're going to bring the field in. Gibbons did the right thing. As long as the rules let you nitpick, you might as well nitpick. Yeah. Okay, so now here is Hanser Alberto. At third, in place of the aching Adrian Beltre, and hitting ninth in the Texas lineup with the infield in. Center field, not terribly deep. Pilar comes on, he makes the catch. Ogor is going to be aggressive, comes to the plate, and he is safe. Oh. It was 
twice. Nick Karapazic said he got in ahead of the tag. Speed, anticipation, and a very creative slide by Rubnet Odor. It looked like Martin was in position to tag him. Check the work by his hands. The left hand, he pulls it back, and then he reaches around with the right hand to tag the bag. What a great piece of creative sliding by Rubnet Odor. See right there, if he keeps the left arm there, Muscle's, Russell's going to tag it. He pulls it back. And then sneaks the right hand across the plate. Great I work mean, by Odor and by our crew boy, to isn't capture that the truth. And, and Pilar could not have played it any better. <laughs> so it goes as a sacrifice fly and a 3 1 lead. Now you see it, now you don't. The elusive left arm of Rubnet Odor. No, nope, I'm not going to let you have it. Boy, he is having some start to this series. Nothing stinky about his play. <laughs> <laughs> what are the odds of this? Rudnet is not the most common of names. He's got a brother who plays in the Texas organization. He's named Rudnet too. Oh, look at that! What a tricky hop off the turf that was, but Calabello. Was able to recover and make the play. I think maybe they want to replace this next year. But this is not helping the Blue Jays. Which turf. Calabello has had an eventful beginning to the game. Unassisted double play earlier. Barehanded this ball. Goes diving to the bag. To end the top of the second. 3-1 Rangers as they try to. Welcome back to this division series telecast on MLB Network presented by Geico with Jim Cotton and Ken Rosenthal, Bob Costas at the Rogers Center in Toronto where a whole lot has gone on wow. in an inning and a half. 
Texas leads it three to one. Roy Tudelitsky starts it off for the Blue Jays. Yeah, I think I've had six wows already in the bottom of the second. I mean, there's been some unbelievable action down in that field. Those are two lows combined totals between the Rockies and the Jays. He had a cracked shoulder blade late in the season. They were concerned that he might not be able to play in the playoffs, but he came back the last weekend of the regular season, got eight at bats, had three hits, and here he is, perhaps playing through clenched teeth, but in the lineup. Grounded toward third, and it gets by Alberto, and it would not, in all likelihood, have gotten by Beltre, who was a Gold Glove oh. third baseman. Well, that was a that was kind of a careless way playing that ball, very nonchalant. Again, this turf is different. He didn't have to come in and feel that on the run, one-handed. Now watch the last little hop. See, it it took a little sideways hop. Tough to anticipate on this surface what it's going to do. We've had some sparkling defense and yeah. some sloppy defense, and we haven't even played two innings yet. Here's Colabello, who's been on the plus side of that equation. Well, you saw a quick shot at Jeff Bannister, and I asked him about Bordeaux's enthusiasm. He said, I just don't want to take that away from these players. They're young, they grew up like that on rock hard fields and and I remember Tony Fernandez who was a great shortstop here. He would field in one hand on the run. And when you make those plays it looks great. But when you miss them like that it looks very careless. That one misses low. Tony Fernandez among those honored. When you think about the teams they had in the 80s and the early 90s. George Bell, Jesse Barfield, Lloyd Mosby, Dave Steve, Tony Fernandez, then later on Robbie Alomar, Joe Carter, Ricky Henderson toward the end of his career, Paul Molitor, Devon White. Wow, they had some good ball clubs. That's down the line, and it's a fair ball. Bounces up into the stands and will go as a double. So Colabello. Wow. Outstanding with the glove and the bat. Man, he is. Here's a young man playing for Team Italy a few years ago and in the minor leagues, and so far he's the Blue Jays star of the game. Slices it down the right field line, lands inside the chalk, hops up into the crowd, and the error by Alberto may have opened the door here in the bottom of the second. Second and third, nobody out for Russell Martin. Seems to follow Martin around. Dodgers, Yankees, Pirates, now Blue Jays. He's been to the postseason with all four of those teams. And a special favorite here because he's from East York, Ontario. Into right field, backing up is true, and it's over his head. It's going to tie the game. Martin's going to be held to a very long single, but the game is even at three. Now you wonder, with the roof closed at the Rogers Center, sometimes you'll say, well, the ball is really carrying in an outdoor situation. Actually, Colabello, to my surprise, Held at third, he must have been fooled too. Yeah, I think mean, that the Chu was going to catch the ball. He held at third, so it's a 3-2 game. But somehow that ball, that looked like a routine fly ball, got over Chu's head and one hopped the wall. Well, to your point, I mean, so far the the balls hit to the outfield are jumping out there. Chu barely had time to turn around. Hamels did not get that pitch anywhere close. Chu takes a quick look, says, "I have no chance." And again, that high bounce. But Colabella had to hold up. You'll see him in the middle of your picture. He had to hold up briefly. He was going to tag and go to third. Right. Just as Tulowitzki is going to tag and come home. But the ball got over Chu's head. And everybody advanced only one base on what looked to be a double. 
So it's three to two. Still nobody out. Colabello at third and Martin at first. And here's Pilar, the center fielder. He hit 278, and he's been a highlight reel glove man in center. They look for the double play, and will concede the tying run on a ball hit on the ground toward the middle. Brooke Jacoby, Blue Jays hitting coach, you see him in your picture right there. He has got to be very pleased. Cole Bella, Russell Martin, Hamels on the mound. They didn't try to pull it. Took the pitch with the other way, got rewarded for it. The 2 0 pitch. Bouncing ball to third. They get one. They get two. As Moreland was able to stay on the bag, and now the game is in fact tied. Alberto, whose error started the inning, was able to start the double play here. Nice job by Moreland on the receiving end. Yeah, the ball got a little deep on Alberto in his glove, and Odor had to catch it and get rid of it in a hurry. And a great camera shot there to see how Mitch Moreland did catch the ball and keep the toe of that spike on the bag. We have seen some action here in two innings. Wow. What's going to happen the next seven? And not all of it conventional action. No. Here's the second baseman and number nine hitter, Ryan Goins. has been in the major leagues for 10 years all of it as a Philly until the trade deadline this year he was six and seven with the Phillies seven and one as a Ranger a combined 13 and eight 30 games over 500 for his career and he brought the curtain down in Philadelphia in fine fashion the last game he threw as a Philly was a no hitter at Wrigley Field in which he struck out 13 and walked only two Bouncing ball to second. Odor. And that's that. But I have a feeling that is not that for the whole game. Talk about starting with a bang. 3-3 three, three after two.
Eastern from St. Louis Cubs Cardinals then out west to L.A. for Mets Dodgers at 930 Eastern tomorrow on TBS. Well if ever Marcus Stroman needed a quiet routine one two three inning it's right now. Back even at three as we start the third. You notice that Stroman wears number six, a single digit number, very unusual for a pitcher. He switched from 54 to six to honor his grandmother, with whom he was very close. His grandmother passed away on March 6th of this year. One and one to Chu, who had an RBI single his first time up. Let's check with Ken Rosenthal. Well, Bob, Marcus Stroman, five foot eight, kind of appeals to my own heart. Hey, you and me both. Absolutely. And guess what? His personal motto is HDMH. Height doesn't measure heart. He says, I can't help that I'm five eight. He an inspiration to people who are born a certain way and can't help that. A called third strike should inspire those who don't top six feet even right. further. Well, and my boyhood idol, one of the greatest little lefties of all time, Bobby Shands, 5'6", 1952 MVP. That was Stroman's first strikeout as he works now to fielder. Hit hard, down to first, Colabello all over it. Good thing that glove was broken in already after a long season, huh? He's putting on a show. And uh, as we've talked about with the surface, it, it's just more difficult for the players to adapt to because they don't play. Of course, the Blue Jays play here all their home games, but it takes a lot of irregular hops compared to normal turf or most fields these days are grass and dirt. And the Cardinals. The Red Sox and Yankees have met many times in the postseason since the institution of the wild card. Hasn't happened with the Giants and Dodgers yet, but it will someday. And finally, it happens between the Cubs and the Cardinals. You know, you talk about that rivalry, it's a great rivalry, but it's not the bitter rivalry that Red Sox Yankees often has been, or Giants Dodgers on the West Coast and on the East Coast both, because seldom have the Cubs and Cardinals been good at the same time. Now there's really something at stake. The atmosphere, both at Bush Stadium and at Wrigley, will be tremendous. A bouncing ball that is foul. And you add to that that the starters, John Lackey and John Lester, were teammates on the Red Sox World mm -hmm. Series winning team. Cubs won't have Jake Arrieta till they get back to Chicago for game three. Because they needed him to win the wild card game and send the Pirates home, despite the fact that Pittsburgh had the second best record in all of baseball. The one two to Moreland. High and away. Moreland was the guy at the plate. Hit the ball down to first base, and on a fielder's choice, Russell Martin made an uncharacteristic error. They threw to the plate, and then he threw it away, trying to catch field in the run down. Two strikeouts in the inning, and just what you asked for from Stroman's perspective, he breezes through the third, one, two, three.
game two Astros Royals on FS1 then see them again in game three Sunday at 4 Eastern here on MLB Network top of the order in the bottom of the third and a ball to Ben Revere who grounded out his first time up small sample but you play all year in part if you make the playoffs for home field the visiting team has won all four playoff games so far now the first two the wild card games were more about Keuchel and Arietta than anything else but Texas won here in Toronto and the Astros won in Kansas City yesterday well when you get to postseason you're right most of the time you're going to have elite pitchers and elite teams and they can win on the road as well as they can win at home broken bat roller Moreland takes it unassisted put out a Josh Donaldson coming up let's take a look at that home run courtesy of Statcast powered by Amazon Web Services we're going to get a look at they all go out faster than they come in that went on out, out almost 110 miles an hour they could have gone 418 feet remember Ray guy the punter for the yeah he had a hang time of 4.1 on his punts that's the hang time on that home run that seemed more like a line drive it looked more like a two iron than a than a high punt but those are the numbers on that home run by Josh Donaldson. And unfortunately for Delano De Shields, he was not in a position to make a fair catch. No. <laughs> what do you think, Donaldson or Trout? A lot of the analytics guys would still lean toward Trout because he does have an edge and wins over replacement. Yeah, but I, I'm still. Although Donaldson's way up there in that category yeah, too. I, I need a tutorial on that. I'm not buying how I figure that yet. But Donaldson's team is in the playoffs and right. Trout's team is not. Let's bring in Kenny. Well, there is one advanced metric that really favors Donaldson, Bob, and it's called win probability added. And I can't figure out the formula either. But right. basically, yeah. it boils down to this. <laughs> Donaldson's at-bats and the impact of those at-bats, the impact of what he has done, that weighs in his favor. You know, you get to some of these complicated formulas. I know more about David Eckstein than about Albert yeah. Einstein. I don't, you know, I don't I, know, after a while, right. my brain gets a little foggy. I don't know if they pick these out of the air. I mean, I hope that we don't get to the point in baseball. Watch this pitcher. Ooh. Ooh. Those are rare outside corner call strike where we forget that these players, and we see that from Odor. They're artists. They're not Broadway actors. They're more performing artists than push button robots. Right on the edge, right where Jimenez was sitting. Donaldson thought it was outside, borderline. Hamill's first strikeout. And here's Bautista. Joey Bats had played some 1,400 major league games without reaching the postseason until yesterday. Marked the occasion with a long home run. He had a critical at bat yesterday that it's kind of the last chance for the the Blue Jays. Three two count chased a bad pitch. He backed away from that like he thought it was way inside but obviously caught part of the strike zone. Oh yeah. And now the one one. Now pitchers have what's called a back foot breaking ball. They'll throw a curveball, but the purpose behind it is to throw it down and in near the hitter's back foot. And I think that's what Batista thought that was coming in that area. Hamill's no hitter in July at Wrigley was one of seven no hitters thrown this year. But to me, the most amazing, the two thrown by Max Scherzer each could have been a perfect game. Looks like this one will make the seat. There's more than one seat, so let's pluralize it. It'll make the seats. In any case, the first one, the 27th guy is hit by a pitch. The second one against the Mets, throwing error on a routine ground ball. Didn't walk anybody in either game. No one has ever thrown two career perfect games. Scherzer came close to throwing two in the same season. Yeah. Oh, we've, we've seen some great pitching performances this season. Left 
midfield coming on skidding is Hamilton and they will rule that he did not get it cleanly. So a two out hit for Bautista. Nice job by Josh Hamilton fielding this ball. You can see he kind of kind of looked away and felt for it, which you'll see pitcher uh, players do quite often. They feel for that ball. It's the instincts, but dangerous, of course, because if it takes any kind of a side hop, Batista is going to be on second or third. So Hamels was on the verge of his first one, two, three inning. Didn't get it. Now has to deal with that Carnacion. Just to finish up the thought, you're Scherzer. You throw two near perfect games. You wind up 14 and 12. You'll be no better than fourth yeah. in the Cy Young voting. Take your pick between Arietta and Greinke. Kershaw struck out more than 300, and he's going to finish third. That's how good some of these guys were this year. Including two guys in this Rogers Center today David Price, Cole Hamels, the second part of the year. Hitters pitch the two out of Encarnacion as a call strike. But for Price, his loss yesterday was his sixth consecutive postseason loss. Six in a row. Carnacion didn't think so, but it uh, looked like it tickled the low inside corner of that strike zone. Dangerous pitch from a Rangers and Cole Hamels standpoint right now. Hitting count for Hamels for uh, Encarnacion. With Tulowitzki on deck. Hit through the middle, deflected by Hamels. He chases it down, quick throw, and gets him. Hamels got just enough of it to slow it down and then pounced on it. And threw Encarnacion out to end the inning.
Well, Bob Costas at the Rogers Center in Toronto. This division series telecast on MLB Network is presented by Geico. Fourth inning, Andrus, Hamilton, and Odor for the Rangers. On the first pitch, at third base, Donaldson across the diamond for the first out. Between innings, Ken Rosenthal talked with Blue Jay manager John Gibbons. John, with all that has gone on in this game, how difficult has it been for Stroman to settle in? Okay, well, yeah, it's, it's been a, it's been a crazy start, no doubt about it. You know, he's kind of a he's a high energy guy anyway. You know, I think that first inning, he was really juiced up. But the way I look at it, I mean, things weren't going our way. You know, we threw a ball away, a couple things went wrong, but he's still getting his ground balls, and that's when you can tell. You know, Life and he's in good shape, you know. And uh, but I think over, he got a little frustrated on uh, when he walked over door. I know that, but you know, I think he thrives off that. He's a little bit different than most guys, and he thrives off that. Donaldson, obviously questionable coming in, hits the big home run. How closely are you monitoring him? Kind of not really, you know. I mean, if he goes to the trainers and says something wrong, then we'll, we'll have to take him out. But uh, you know, it was big. He hit that home run, you know, after that first inning to get us back into it. You know, take a little heat off a little bit. So. And then we're scratching a claw. This is kind of making some great ball game. John, thanks a lot. Thank you. Well, as Gibbons told Kenny, yeah, Stroman's still getting his ground balls, and this fourth inning starts with a pair of ground outs. And it brings up Odor with two out and nobody on. Close to the first three pitches of uh, this inning were strikes. When he struck out Moreland, to end the last inning, that was the first swing and a miss, and he got two quick outs on two pitches. He has eight ground ball outs, a result of that two seam fastball that he picked up. We just called it a sinking, moving fastball. Very effective. The one two. Perhaps settling in at this point in a three all game. A perfect third, followed by a one, two, three, four.
StatCast is powered by Amazon Web Services. See more of MLB's revolutionary tracking technology at MLB.com slash StatCast. Troy Tulowitzki to start it in the bottom half of the fourth. He reached on an error in the second. David Price and Cole Hamels, the aces of the respective staffs, now that Texas has been without you, Darvish, Tommy John surgery all season long. They missed each other in game one, but because of the setup in the division series with off days, they could hook up in game five. If there is one, a ball and two strikes, you get an off day between games two and three. If game five is needed, they come back here from Texas with an off day in between, meaning that Price would pitch that game on five days rest and Hamels on the normal four. So it could happen. Managers will play it day by day game by game. But I would be inclined to think if the Blue Jays were down two games to one price would pitch game four. He might. That would be what three days. That'd rest? be on three days rest. He could which, pitch on three days rest. Which if baseball, in game four, if baseball people would study it a little more thoroughly and deeply, it is the best way to pitch. Could happen. On one and two, foul back. You know what's happened now because of the second wild card. It's changed so many things and created so many subplots where teams go to the very end either to make. The first wild card or second, or to avoid it, and so that scrambles their pitching. Or you've got to use a guy like Arietta or Keuchel to win the wild card game, which pushes him back to Game Three of the division series. Lots of stuff going on. Yeah. Good at bat here by Tulowitzki. Stroman had his quick one-two-three inning. Lots of strikes. Hamels in is in the need of a, a clean inning himself, but these uh, Blue Jays are putting together some good at bats, taking it to deep counts. Colabello on deck, and then Martin. Struck him out, but it got away. It bounces back, and then a double pump, and they still get him. For whatever reason, Jimenez, who was lucky enough to have the ball bounce right back to him, had a little bit of trouble releasing the throw, and that made it a closer play than you might ordinarily think. It goes as a strikeout, but they have to record the out at first. And between innings, we recorded this interview. Ken Rosenthal talking with Jeff Bannister, the manager of the Rangers. Jeff, obviously an unusual start to this game. What have you seen from Cole? Well, <clears throat> There's been a few pitches he's left in the middle of the zone, a couple situations, but he started off by the, the error at third base. We know that we, if we give these guys extra outs in, in an inning, they can make you pay. A lot of people haven't seen much of Ruben Ordor before this series. What stands out the most to you about him? Just the edge that he plays with and how he likes to play the game. Plays the game hard, all 27 outs. It, it, you know, the epitome of a baseball player, backyard player, loves to play the game. Jeff, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thanks to Jeff and Ken. And a look at Rudnet Odor behind Cole Hamels, who works on Chris Colabello, who's had an outstanding day already at first base and doubled in his only turn at bat. Remember. Veteran infielder years ago. I think he played with the Cardinals and the Brewers. Fernando Villa. Of course, little guy. Look, look at that guy. Facially, yeah. Yeah. That's what he looks like. They're all guessing. The pitchers are guessing. The hitters are guessing. And Vic Carpaza has the final say. Hamels 
shaking his head no a couple of times and then Colabello backing out. Leap in 2015, as you see, for Colabello. Hit hard, but it's right out of door. And by the way, for Colabello, that wasn't that small a sample hitting over 300. He had 333 at bats. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball, and Commissioner Manfred is here today at the Rogers Center and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of the game may not be disseminated without express written consent and there is the commission who has received favorable reviews succeeding but so far just as a quick side note the commission's first game as a young boy, he saw my roommate Jim Merritt pitch against the Yankees. And even though the Twins won the game, your favorite player, Mickey Mantle, hit two home runs. You know what? He and I had a conversation about that earlier this year, and we both remembered it as if it was oh, yesterday. Well, I know you would. <laughs> you remember all of Mickey's home runs. Merritt was a left hander. Mickey was a better hitter right handed, especially toward the end of his career. Took him deep a couple of times. I think one of them was a grand slam, but we digress. <laughs> As we have been known to do. Three and oh to Martin. Might have to hit some. He does. And it's another chance for Odor. Not a good 3 0 swing. The Jays go in order in the fourth. And to some extent, order has been restored at the Rogers Center. It's still 3 3.
Telecast on MLB Network is presented by Masterpass, your shortcut to priceless. And sponsored in part by Mazda, Driving Matters. And by Esurance, official sponsor of Major League Baseball. After a very rocky start, some of which the fault in his defense, Marcus Stroman has now retired nine in a row as he starts the fifth. Ball strike to Jimenez. Who bounced out to the mound his first time up? But that was not a routine ground out. Odor was aboard on a walk. Jimenez hit a big bouncer over the mound. And when several infielders converged near the middle of the diamond, no one was covering third, and Odor went all the way from first to third on the ground out and then scored on a sacrifice fly. Jimenez, I'm sure Kenny has more on it. This guy's got a transaction list a half a page long. Yes. And he was trying to hit that one in the upper deck. Well, every transaction imaginable for Chris Jimenez designated for assignment, waived, claimed on waivers, traded. But here he is, a journeyman in his first postseason game. And he's clicked really well with Cole Hamels. That's why he's in there today. Donaldson gets a friendly hop and gets the first out on the fifth. Both these managers, John Gibbons and Jeff Bannister, can really relate to the journeyman player, the guy who scuffled. We heard Bannister tell the story of his one and only big league at bat, which resulted in a single career batting average 1,000 back in 1991. Well, John Gibbons had a cup of coffee with the Mets of the mid 80s, the very good. New York Mets of the mid 80s. He was a catcher and he wasn't going to displace Gary Carter, that's for sure. A strike to Alberta. He had one big league home run. He hit it off Mike Jackson of the Phillies on a day when he had four hits, two of which were doubles, and one bounced into the stands. And Gibbons said, for a catcher, his little slow roll to foul. For a catcher, I could run. And it really ticked me off because if it had stayed in play, I think I could have had a triple and I would have had the cycle. This must be the homer. Yeah. Off the thriller. Michael Jackson. 40 man rosters. September 20th, 1986 is one and only. Big league round triple. Stroman notches his fourth strikeout. And he's retired 11 in a row. Well, the acronym that Kenny talked about, about his height and his heart is really coming into play. I mean two rocky first innings for a young pitcher not any postseason experience and all of a sudden to turn into the dominant pitcher that he's been. Pretty remarkable for a 24 year old. Delino to Shields smacks one toward the middle. It's flattened down by Tulowitzki a rolling four. Strowman leads the cheering section. 50,000 more behind him. Gold glove work by Tulowitzki there. First to get to him. Then to spin and deliver an on target throw that finishes to Shields and the Rangers in the fifth.
You like your baseball? Four games today. Wow. This is just the <laughs> first. And what are we talking about? A quadruple header. There's the next three. Order out. You're not going out for dinner. Order in, I mean. Yeah. Call room service or something. And for the late one, maybe hit the tape machine. Now for Mets and Dodgers, that kind of pitching matchup, you can stay up late. Bottom of the fifth in a tie game. Along Goins and Revere. Hamill seems to have a little better feel right now for that change of pace. I say change of pace. We always tend to say change up. It's really change down. <laughs> You're taking speed off, not putting it on. What could turn out to be the difference in this game is the absence of Adrian Beltre because on a ground ball hit by Troy Tulowitzki in the second inning, Hanser Alberto botched an easy chance. It opened the door to a two run inning. The Rangers have led three to one. The Jays tied at 3 3 in that second, and that's where we stand now in the fifth. Adrian Beltre, over the last six seasons, has led all major league third basemen in every significant hitting category. He is a gold glove quality fielder. As you see, he's won the award four times. He's building a Hall of Fame resume with a shot at 3,000 hits and maybe an outside shot at 500 home runs. He is the modern day equivalent of my former teammate Mike Schmidt. He's the modern day Schmitty when you look at all he's done hits, gold gloves, home runs, power. Full count now to Pilar. He hit into a double play on which the tying run scored back in the second. No RBI for him. But the game was tied after that at bat. This one is looped in the right field. It will drop fairly. Here's Pilar on his way to second. And in with a leadoff double. Not well hit, but very well placed. Hit well, but well placed again. All their hits, they know that Hamill says that changeup. They're all waiting just long enough to take it the other way. And there's there's the signal. He and Kawasaki usually have a little their own personal two-man cheering section with their signals going on. So now Goins, who grounded the second his first time. Bunts, and a good one. Hamels has to go to first. They get the out there. And Pilar is at third with one down. One four as O'Dor covered. For Pilar at third, the Rangers obviously bring the infield in. We've talked about this turf. You've got to be able to anticipate and read the high bouncing ball if you're Kevin Pilar. Revere's over for two.
Good late movement. Running it down and in. Big spot against his old Philly teammate, Ben Revere. Probably their most disciplined and best contact hitter gets a pitch down and in. And even as good as Odor has been, he can't get that one. Boy, the noise level has sure changed here since the top of the first. A smile and revere with Mitch Moreland at first. And the Jays in front 4 3. Here's Donaldson. He's homered and struck out. This is the fifth postseason game so far this October. First time the home team has had a lead in any of them. If Odor had been back in normal position, he would have fielded the ball, but the run would have scored himself. Yeah. Chance to take when you pull the infield in. Now Revere at first with one out. Donaldson has shown a great ability. He can go, he's going back to that home run he hit in first. And Hamilton's got ahead 0 and 2. He's not been a chaser. Very disciplined up there so far. One and two. Hamels, it's safe to say, does not have his A game today. But he's been around the big leagues for a decade. He's pitched in a lot of big games, regular and postseason. And trying to get his team at least deep enough into this game and close enough to have a chance to win it, even if he isn't throwing a masterpiece. Received a lot of help from his fielders, Alberto, with that costly error, and he's facing the most deep and dangerous lineup that he faces all year. Rangers, got the Blue Jays, have six hits, one of them, the Donaldson home run. Fastball way high, two and two. Field. Here's Chu. Revere back to first. Inside target. Didn't quite get it where he wanted to, as uh, Jeff Bannister had said in his interview with Kenny Rosenthal. Hamels has left a few pitches out over the plate. This situation if uh, you're Ben Revere and if you're John Gibbons, uh, I know Batista's a home run hitter, but uh, Odor playing deep over there. Wouldn't be surprised to see Revere try to steal a bag. As a Blue Jay, he swiped seven and nine attempts. Batista hits one deep down the left field line, and it is a foul ball. More than enough distance. Couldn't quite straighten it out. Now he is like Mike Trout and Andrew McCutcheon. You come inside early in the count, their eyes get wide open. 
but what Hamels did with that one, he got it far enough inside. The only thing Batista could do was pull it foul. Revere skips back. Passion reignited here in Toronto. Remember the days when a season's attendance of four million plus was a given here back when they called it Sky Dome. Not a single seat to be had yesterday or today. Hamels ahead of Bautista 0 oh 2. This would be a good, good pitch right here for Ben Revere to take off. Gamble, 0 oh 2 count. Get thrown out. You give Batista a fresh count. If you're guessing change up or breaking ball, it's going to be more difficult for Jimenez to. Looks like they want to throw the first. A sky high pop. Although actually it can't reach the sky because the roof is closed. And that is that. The RBI hit from Revere gives the Blue Jays the lead after five as we go back to our MLB Network studio to check in with Greg Amsinger. Toronto, lovely cosmopolitan city. As we tell you, you can follow every pitch of the postseason with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Stay connected with highlights, replay reviews, scores, pitch tracking, live radio broadcasts, and more. Download the at bat app today. And official caps, hoodies, jackets, and more. Celebrate with your favorite team at the MLB.com shop. On to the sixth. Blue Jays in front, four to three. Shinsu Chu had an RBI single in the first, struck out in the third. Stroman has now retired a dozen in a row. Shift on Chu, and he hits it the other way, but lining it up is revealed for the catch. 
a rare flyout that most of them have been ground outs and we're going to give you a look at why Statcast powered by Amazon Web Services check out the spin rate on Marcus Stroman's slider 2561 RPMs and then the curve a little slower a little less spin as we get an inventory of all the different pitchers and the different spins they have we'll be able to show you where that ranks like with the Jake Arrieta's mm -hmm. it's a lot of spin on his pitches Whatever he's doing with his pitches, no one can hit them over the last okay. couple of months. Yeah. In fact, as Matt Vasgersian pointed out last night doing the Astros Royals game, the last game that Arietta lost was the no hitter that Cole Hamels pitched for the Phillies against the Cubs at Wrigley in late July. Since then, untouchable. Yeah. 2 0 to fielder who's 1 for 2. Bouncing ball, second base, going. Lots of time with fielder running. That's the second out. And 14 straight set down by Stroman. Can't say enough about how he has come back. And John Gibbons referred to it. He said to Kenny Rosenthal, you know, it was a rough first couple innings, but he thrives on that, settled down. And uh, he is feeling it right now. Mitch Moreland reached on a fielder's choice, then struck out. We were speculating about the possible game four and five pitchers, assuming there is a game four and then a game five. We know for sure that game three in Texas matches up Marco Estrada with the Blue Jays against Derek Holland for the Rangers. Holland, normally very, very good. Had some injury problems earlier this year, and since coming back in August, he's been hit pretty hard. So we'll see if he's up to the task in game three. If everything holds and there is a game four, the knuckleballer R.A. Dickey against Colby Lewis, who won 17 this year for Texas. There's a strike, three and one. A pitch before that, just a quick reference. See Russell Martin sitting outside. He reached for the pitch. I think actually it was a strike when the umpire sees a catcher reach. Have to call it a ball. That's the advantage of having a catcher with a pitcher with a lot of movement just sit in the middle. This crowd will get to their feet right now. Some 50,000 seats sold. Just about none of them in use. Everybody standing, towels waving, hoping to send their team on to Texas with the series even. I think that standing and cheering with two strikes started back in the years of Ron Gifford with the Yankees. He get to, you know, he had that phenomenal year against the Angels and with two strikes, the uh, 19 strikeout game and the and the fans would get on their feet like they're doing right here at Rogers Center. Shortly after that, the idea of dropping the K's down after each strikeout. That was close to a K, but after 14 consecutive retired, Moreland draws a two out walk on a very close 3 2 pitch. Ah, I mean, that, that late movement. Well, there are some umpires, and as a pitcher, you try to scout them. See, so it had enough of the corner. Just a shade low. And, well, I'll tell you what, if we see it going across the front knee, I would guess it's a strike. But some umpires are sitting back there saying, I want to call strikes unless it's a ball. Others say it's a ball. Just the opposite. Elvis Andrus hits one toward right center field. Softly, it drops in there for a base hit. So a walk and a single. And an RBI chance for Josh Hamilton. Well, this would be an interesting situation. John Gibbons checking the lineup card, and there's uh, action in the Blue Jays bullpen. 
Mark Lowe, the tall right-hander. They're they're visiting right now with uh, with Stroman, and you wouldn't think unless it's the two-seam sinker down and away, Josh Hamilton is going to see many fastballs. Up until this point, teams have thrown him curve after curve. Hamilton missed a lengthy stretch this year on the DL with a bad knee. Wound up hitting 253. A few years ago, one of the most dangerous hitters in the game, hit 359 in the course of winning the MVP award in 2010 for a Ranger team that went to the World Series. He's hit into a double play and grounded out to them. And he's quickly behind Stroman 0 and 2. Since the 2011 World Series against the Cardinals, the postseason has not been kind to Hamilton. This would be a good time to stop that skid. Now with three pitches to play with, and you looked at that skid, and that's the reason it's the breaking ball. He has not had a lot of plate discipline, and pitchers have been just dropping that. Curveball right on home plate, getting him to chase it. Two on, two out on the 0 2 pitch. Struck him out. Now it's official. Five strikeouts for Stroman, who struts a little bit off the mound. And why not? After five and a half, he leads it four to three. Joe Carter touching them all, but share your favorite moments using hashtag MLB Memory Bank and view the best baseball memories all in one place. That's bankofamerica.com slash MLB Memory Bank. 
was Carter's home run that ended game six in 1993 against the Phillies. And gave the Blue Jays their second consecutive world championship. They had beaten the Braves for the title in 92. And Carnacion has fly to deep center and grounded out to the mound. We had mentioned that Derek Holland might pitch game three against Marco Estrada in Texas. That's the way it was lined up at the beginning of the series. But the Rangers have now switched to Martin Perez. And then after that I guess it's TBA for everybody right. depending upon where the series stands. R.A. Dickey certainly a possibility the 40 year old knuckleballer and one time Cy Young Award winner when he was with the Mets. Mark Burley a terrific veteran left hander 115 this year for the Blue Jays but is not on the roster for this series. You can see the issue Hamels is dealing with with these Blue Jays hitters. They're not chasing. He's getting 0 2 counts. They don't chase. Next thing is 3 2. Smashed down to third. Alberto's got this one. And that's the first out. If you're just joining us, the Rangers are without Adrian Beltre. So they miss his bat. He who hit the go ahead home run in the division clincher against the Angels on Sunday. And they certainly miss his four time gold glove defense. And Alberto's error earlier in the game may turn out to be crucial. Looking back on that error, I'm sure that Inel uh, Berto was being talked to in the Rangers dugout afterwards. Just the manner in which he played the ball. Anybody can make an error, but that was just a sloppy play. <laughs> Tulowitzki has a National League history against Hamels. Counting his 0 for 2 today, 5 for 21 with a couple of homers against Cole. Change one and two. Strikeout for Hamels. And he's closing in on 100 pitches here in the sixth. Looked like that uh, gold standard change of pace. Modeled himself after Hall of Famer Tom Glavin, who featured that pitch as well. Here's Chris Colabello. Mentioned earlier that in every respect he's really blossomed this season. Hit 321 with 15 homers in 333 at bats. Has a double today and several impressive defensive plays. Ken Rosenthal. Ken? Well, Bob, we know all about the Jays' big ticket acquisitions, the free agent signing of Russell Martin, and all of the trades. Colabello, a waiver claim. A waiver claim last December. The Jays recalled that he had gone 8 for 12 with three doubles against them while playing for the Twins the previous April, and here he is now. Fastball high, one and two. You know, and sometimes, despite all the information that's available, Ken, it's what you see against your own team that leaves a bigger impression than the bigger sample against the rest of the league. Now the one-two evens the count. Also, Bob, he was really happy to become teammates with Josh Donaldson. They share a batting coach. They share a similar hitting philosophy. Their lockers are next to each other in the home clubhouse. And Colabello says that Donaldson's utter belief in himself has rubbed off on him. He says, I'm tricking myself into believing it too. 
Well, he better believe that Hamels got the better of him that time as he hit 100 pitches and recorded his fourth strikeout. We've gone through six, and it's a one run game. Amazon Web Services will show you the speed and the base running ability of Rubnet Odor. This is that high bouncer. He went from first to third on that high infield bouncer. And then check out this shallow fly. They said it wasn't just the speed, it was the slide. He cranks it up to over 20 miles an hour, almost the same speed of his teammate Delano De Shields. So Stinky Odor is coming up smelling like roses in this series so far. I knew you'd have one like that. <laughs> uh, he's fun to watch. Strowman's 1-0 pitch. Is a chopper into the shift, and he's out of there. But that's not going to stop me from telling you this, because I may not get another chance. I mentioned earlier that Rugned Odor, which is an unusual name, has a brother who's also named Rugned. But it runs in the family because he has an uncle named Ruglas who's a minor league coach in the Cleveland organization and both of Uncle Ruglas's sons are also named Ruglas. They uh, they're friends of George Foreman. Yeah but five sons all named George. Makes it easy just to rubber stamp the birth certificate. I tell you this this is some impressive performance by Marcus Stroman. What he had to deal with the first uh, two innings. And he is dealing right now. He, he sure is. He start, I'll tell you, the play that Colabella made turned the whole game around for me. The unassisted double play? Exactly. It's a bullpen game now. John Gibbons is going to have uh, lefty and righty ready at the first sign of trouble. Cecil has been very, very effective last part of the season. Brett Cecil, outstanding.
curveball. And Mark Low, the righty. Brown ball to short. Lewinsky, there's the second out. Kenny. Guys, let's not forget how Stroman's season started. Routine bunt fielding drill in spring training. He goes down, tears his ACL on his landing leg, thought to be out for the season. Calls his parents, he's very upset. Hangs up the phone, calls his mom back 10 minutes later, says, you know what? I want to go back to Duke University, complete my degree in sociology. I'll do my rehab there. That is exactly what he did. There's a little bloop and a shallow right, and coming on is Bautista to make a tumbling catch that retires Alberto and ends the inning. Stroman has retired 18 of the last 20 with a little help from his friends. Back to the Rogers Center in just a bit. Slide by Rupnet O'Dor. It's blocked down by Tulowitzki. A rolling Well, that's what happens sometimes in television. You get caught in between things. It is a foul ball. Luckily enough. Yeah. So, <laughs> Russell Martin will return. And that gives us a chance to tell you for those who might not be familiar Russell who was from Ontario Canada I'm going to watch this one more time Alberto with a big effort that turned out not to be necessary full name Russell Nathan Coltrane Jenson Martin Jr. Now except for Coltrane all other aspects of that lengthy name are tributes to family members John Coltrane yep because Russell Martin Sr. was an accomplished saxophonist who idolized John Coltrane. And that's where it comes from. Played in jazz clubs around Canada. And we 
can say that Martin has helped the Jays take some giant steps in the American League East this year. <laughs> so here's Hamels on a day when he isn't 100% sharp, but still into the seventh inning. The complete game is on the endangered species list. He has two of them this year, one of which was his no hitter when still with the Phillies, but he'll consistently get his team to the seventh or the eighth. Check and he didn't go. And let's not forget for both of these starting pitchers, it's a 4 3 game, but only two runs for each team were earned. Ooh, that's that's borderline. That could easily have been called a strike. That's a very difficult call for the first base up by fouled away. Martin is one for two, had an RBI single in the second. has now fanned three in a row five for the game but three in a row so this division series telecast on MLB Network is presented by Geico and Ken Rosenthal was in the midst of telling us an interesting story about Marcus Stroman when the inning abruptly ended a short while ago and we're going to let Kenny resume in just a moment as Kevin Pillar steps in with Ryan Goins on deck one out nobody on in the seventh and Kenny it's all yours well we were talking Bob about Marcus Stroman going back to Duke to complete his degree his days there were quite structured quite busy he would work out go to class work out again and then take night classes the whole time his intent was to come back this season despite the prognosis he of course accomplished that and Bob I'll come back to it once more H D M H height does not measure heart <laughs> any intent on getting that message across nor does lack of <laughs> look at this yeah that's something worth tweeting many yeah. things are not that is Boy. Some story. Pilar has hit into a double play and double. I see Brett Cecil heating up in the Blue Jay bullpen, and I <laughs> Stroman has been on such a roll. I'm sure John Gibbons is saying, I don't dare to take him out. You wouldn't take him out in the middle of the inning for what fear of what these fans would say, but the end of this Blue Jay bullpen with Cecil and Osuna. Been pretty strong. Another chance for Alberto. Backs up a bit, gets the good hop, and throws him out. So Hamels has had 20 starts this year between the Phillies and the Rangers, where he threw seven or more innings. Only Clayton Kershaw with 22, and John Lackey of the Cardinals. Dallas Keuchel of the Astros and Zach Greinke of the Dodgers with 21 did it more often. Chris Sale of the White Sox and Max Scherzer of the Nationals equal Hamels with 20. So not that many. Two out, nobody on. When we get to the top of the eighth. It'll be Strowman's fourth time through the order if they leave him in there. And the analytics tell you that for most pitchers, you get to the third or especially the fourth time through, and it isn't just the pitch buildup, it's the hitter's familiarity maybe with what you're throwing at them, what your repertoire is. The fourth time is a dangerous trip through the lineup. I'll go back to Kenny's acronym. Height doesn't <laughs> measure heart. <laughs> Neither do the last two innings of the game. <laughs> Wow, Hamels finding a groove toward the end. Struck out four of the last five hitters he's faced. Seven in the books. Four three Toronto.
right side tomorrow. Cubs, Cardinals, Mets, Dodgers, both games on TBS. On to the eighth here in Toronto. Runners there. Third first half the corners. You can never not anticipate an attempted bunt from the Lino to Shields. Twelve bunt hits this year. Something old school about this. Both starters still in there. Stallman's first pitch of the eighth. The Shields bluffs a bunt, pulls back, takes a ball. Well, this is probably Strowman's last out of the game, last attempt at getting it out. Next three hitters left handed. Brent Cecil dominant against lefties, warming up. And if he were to get him out, we're going to hear some kind of a thunderous ovation. And that's what he's done in seven plus innings. And that damage done in the first two innings and just two of the rounds earned. Shields opened the game with a double. Later scored. Then was robbed of hits twice after that. Lines it to center field, coming on quickly, but not quickly enough as Pilar drops in front of him. So to Shields, who stole 25 and 33 attempts, is on, and you were right. He wanted Stroman to face to Shields. A soft line drive puts him at first base with nobody out and the ovation begins. with a chip on his shoulder. But what he really pitched with today was hard. This is the Hartford pitching change. In comes 29 year old Brett Cecil. And a throw to first to chase the Shields back. Yeah, speed slows the game down. Hard to say that, but that's what it does. And you're going to see a lot of attention paid to the line of the Shields. Shin Su Chu is 3 for 14 lifetime against Cecil with seven strikeouts. He's very tough on lefties, but this year, righties didn't fare any better. 
Lefties 195. Righties 198. He's come up with that pitch like Stroman used that sinking fastball and what the players call a wipeout curveball. The lefties tough to hit. The bunt dragged toward first but a bit too hard. So Chu is retired but it serves the purpose of a sacrifice. Kind of refreshing to see the way Jeff Bannister plays the game. I mean, down one, late innings. Uh, we're accustomed to seeing teams just play station to station, hope they get the long ball. Stroman looks on. Chu's idea was if it was a perfect drag bunt, maybe I'd beat it out. Sure. At worst, if it's fair, it's a sacrifice. So now here's Prince Fielder. Yesterday, Cecil pitched a scoreless eighth, and in the process, he struck Fielder out. Fielder has never had a hit against him in six career at bats. Here's where you also have to be aware if you're the Blue Jays, the Lino De Shields can steal third very easily. Donaldson way off the bag there. Fielder not quite the threat he once was when he hit 50 home runs in 2007 for the Brewers and knocked home 141 two years later, both league leading figures. But still hit over 300 with nearly 100 RBIs and 23 home runs this season for the Rangers. Cecil wheels and no play. Now Josh Donaldson has to peek at him out of the corner of his left eye because if he takes off, Donaldson's got a little more than the average run to third base from where he's playing field. Oh and two. A year ago. Fielder had to have surgery early in the season in May of 2014 to fuse two discs in his neck very similar to the procedure that allowed Peyton Manning to continue his NFL career. It lowered his production obviously it dampened his mood he played in only 42 games but this year has come back to put up good numbers and to be an uplifting spirit in the Ranger clubhouse. The 0 2 he lays off. This is where you have to trust your catcher if you're Brent Cecil, and he did right there. Talked about the wipeout curveball. He had the count. Try to get Fielder to chase something. There's any little bobble by Russell Martin, the Shield's going to get the third. Stroman watching intently. Cecil to the belt. Two and two. has a good weapon on his bench from the right side. It looks like he'll go to Mike Napoli and that'll give John Gibbons a chance. As Stroman's Stroman now becomes a cheerleader. Well Gibbons is aware of this. Napoli is just two for 17 with seven strikeouts against Cecil. And thus he's paying attention to the Pass stats. You're going to stay with a lefty. Oh. The way Cecil has been effective against righties, you mentioned, is that sinking fastball like Stroman featured to the lefties. Napoli, who has always had a good eye, high bait on base percentage, with the Rangers when they went to the World Series in 2010 and 2011, then off to Boston, 
won a World Series with them over the Cardinals in 2013. Back to the Lone Star State this year. And this may tie the game. Here comes to Shields. He will score, and it's even up at four. A pinch hit single from Mike Napoli. Yeah, the stats tell you what happened in the past. The right hand hitter always has a better percentage against the left hand pitcher, and that takes away the potential win for Marcus Stroman. Good job of hitting by there's a curveball, waited on it. There was a big hole between first and second. With Goins tucked near the second base bag, and Napoli found that hole. Now, nobody knows their personnel better than the manager that's in the dugout, but this is not the best matchup, and it's just a great piece of hitting by Mike Napoli. Waited on that curveball and shot it through the open hole. Big cut in the mitt by missed by Andrews. When the Shields came across the plate, he looked like he was hobbling just a little bit. Well, we hopefully can catch it again. Might see a replacement. To, there you see the little bit of a hop skip, and it's, he's he's favoring a, a knee injury, and oftentimes they will take him out in the uh, latter part of the game. Might see Drew Stubbs in there in center field. Andrews at the plate is one for three, had a single in the sixth. Have the top of the or their order: Revere, Donaldson, Bautista, and then Encarnacion. If anyone should reach. They've got him picked off. Napoli hung up between first and second, and unless he pulls a Jackie Robinson here, he's done. And he is. Sometimes I wonder when you're picked off like that, if you're not better off to just keep on going to second base and hope that they throw it away. In any case, that ends it. But Napoli's pinch hit prior to his being picked off had tied the game. And Cecil is now walking off in a rather gingerly fashion. And we'll check on him when we come back.
This division series game on MLB Network is presented by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. It's sponsored in part by Michelob Ultra. Fewer carbs, calories, and superior taste make it the superior light beer. And by the Quicksilver card, earn unlimited 1.5% cash back every purchase every day. You get Quicksilver from Capital One. Time now for the Hartford pitching change. But before we get to that, Mike Napoli stays in the game. Having pinch hit for Mitch Moreland and delivered the hit that tied the game. Here's Sam Dyson out of the bullpen in relief of Cole Hamels. If you were wondering about Delino De Shields, who was hobbling a little bit as he crossed the plate with a game tying run, he remains in the game and plays center field. As far as Brett Cecil is concerned, we don't know yet. He was limping after getting tangled up with Napoli on the rundown play. That ended the top half of the inning. All right, here's Ben Revere. His RBI single his last time up gave the Blue Jays the lead. Here's how the last inning ended. Napoli's picked off. Yeah, Cecil backing him up and running him towards center. When he made the tag check right there at the bottom, he must have done something. Down to the foot of the ankle, came limping off a bit. That play goes 1 3 6 1 to end the inning. Another look at it. Let's see. It looked like that left instep caught his right foot. Boy, the Rangers really bring their infield or their outfield in against Revere. Very shallow in left and center. A lot of room in the gaps. With the Revere's speed be an extra base hit easily. And Dyson's 1 1 pitch. Makes it one and two. Now at the beginning of this series, Derek Holland was listed as the Rangers game three starter. Colby Lewis tentatively for game four. Both of them in a tie game in the eighth are warming up right now in the Texas bullpen. Holland the lefty. Lewis the righty. As Bannister well knows you get a game that goes 15 16 innings and you're in the playoffs. You're using starters as relievers. A bit removed from that at this point, only in the eighth, but it is a tie game. Hey, Sam Dyson's been quite a find. He actually started with this Blue Jay organization. And they were scouting the Marlins, looking at another pitcher, and the scout said, Hey, here's the guy we want. Throws that uh, two seam sinking fastball by 97, and then he chokes it down, and he's got a changeup that's got more velocity than a lot of pitchers' fastballs. Tough to get the ball in the air against him. Back to Dyson. He knocks it down. He scrambles. He throws. And Revere beats it. Dyson knocked it down, but then he himself went down, and that might have cost him the play. Now well, we've talked a lot about the, the power and the, the talents and the assets of both these teams, but this game has been who's going to make the fewest mistakes? And this is the second glaring one for the Rangers. The first one by Alberto cost them two runs. It scored as an infield hit. Oh, my goodness. That's a gift. Very well, generous. <laughs> well, when you have 16 gold gloves on the no, mantle, that, as you do, you're going to no, grade on a anybody that's tougher scale. Taking pitchers fielding practice seriously, I mean, anybody can make an error, but that certainly should not be scored a hit. So here's Josh Donaldson, who was homered, struck out, and fly out. Revere, who runs well, is at first. No one thinking bunt here. And Donaldson shatters his back, loops one towards short, and Andrews retreats to make the catch. 
gives you a little idea of why they call Sam Dyson's sinking fastball a bowling ball sinker. That must be what it felt like when it hit Josh Donaldson's bat. In on the hands. A lot of late movement. Well, sinker ball pitcher with that heavy sinker. Jimenez, not known as one of your better throwing catchers. Certainly up the percentage of Revere trying to steal second base. On the other hand, you got Donaldson, who has now been disposed of, but now Bautista and then Encarnacion. So that makes you think twice about running. Well, you, you got to figure they got a better chance to hit a single than a home run against Dyson. Bautista's one for three, a single in the third. He is going. Here's the throw. He steals it. Cott calls it. Revere steals it. That was a pretty obvious percentage play. Nothing against uh, Chris Jimenez. You got a hip sinker ball pitcher. Ball's going to be low. Tough to get in position. He did it perfectly. Verveer just got a great jump against Dyson. Watch that first step. That first step was all it took. And what Ben Revere did that's cost so many base runners in this game sliding head first. He knows how to hang on to the bag by bracing that lead hand against the edge of the bag. All important these days where a replay review might reveal that for just a split second you lost contact with the bag. So now Dyson who got the save yesterday. Trying to just keep it a tie game here in the eighth. certainly can't complain about a lack of work. He was in each of the Rangers last five regular season games. But there's that heavy sinker. And he got the save yesterday. Notice what Jeff Bannister really has to do here. You'd love to play your outfield a little shallow. Have a shot at throwing out Revere. But first of all the slow turf. And then Batista's power, so any ball hit to the outfield with Revere's going to be able to walk home. Three of the top four in the American League wore Blue Jay uniforms this year. Time call before the pitch, and Dyson. Kind of lobs it up there. Well, Revere does not have a base stealer's lead there, but certainly Dyson wants to pay close attention to it. Some base stealers get a big lead. They just kind of walk off there and get a big lead. Others like Revere right now getting a very pedestrian type of lead, but as we saw from first, he got a great first step. The 0 2 pitch struck him out. They've got to throw to first. And that takes care of Bautista. Jimenez ran out toward the mound because he knew he had time. Just made sure that Revere was back towards second before he made his throw to first to officially retire Bautista. Here's what Bob's talking about that heavy sinker. Jimenez blocks it, takes a check of Revere, holds, makes him hold his ground, and then throws out Batista. So now it's up to Encarnacion. First base is open, but Tulowitzki is on deck. 
They're going to walk him anyway. Well, that shows you the respect for Eddie Encarnacion. <laughs> Dyson almost airmailed Jimenez. <laughs> Well, a couple of things here. Tulowitzki has been one of the game's most productive players for a long time, but he's coming off an injury. He's hit just 239 as a member of the Blue Jays. And Encarnacion has been mashing all season long. Of course, 39 throw, homers, more than 100 ribbies. I throw all these uh, tendencies and stats and stuff out the window because there's, there's one thing inside of Tulowitzki right now. He's saying, I haven't done much with the bat. But boy, I got a chance to do something here. Tula has reached on an error and then struck out twice. See how they play him in the infield. He, he knows it's going to be difficult as Steve Bouchel, the bench coach, passes on some info to Mike Maddox, the pitching coach. He knows it'll be difficult to get the ball airborne. So he's got to look at the infield defense and just see. You know, Rod Carew, my former teammate, Rod Carew, Hall of Famer, was great during batting practice. He would look out where guys were in the field and he would practice hitting the ball to him just to make contact and spray the ball around. And that's what Tulowitzki has to look at right now. Just make contact with the ball through the infield. A very few guys, Rod Carew, Tony Gwynn, actually could direct right. a baseball. <laughs> yeah. Most normal humans, even those good enough to play in the big leagues, are just hoping to make solid contact. Well, this was just in practice, but I'm just saying that was the thinking behind batting practice. Just make contact, and that's kind of the approach Tulowitzki has to have right now. Looks like Odor is playing him a bit to pull if he's going to maintain that position behind second base. And so, Napoli way off the bag yeah, at they're, first. They're leaving him uh, a very generous opening there between Napoli and Odor. The very sort of opening that Napoli exploited for the game time pinch hit a moment ago. On the first pitch, it's a broken bat. Odor has to play it on a bounce. Bear hands it and throws him out. Odor making an impression here. In the first two games in Toronto. <laughs> we go to the ninth, tied at four.
will be on MLB Network, 4 Eastern, 3 Central. The telecast presented by Geico, and there is the pitching pairing. So the Royals better hope they win game two. Otherwise, they're looking at Dallas Keuchel yeah. down 0 2 in a best of five. And I believe he's 15 and 0 down at Minden Maid Park. He is. Yep. So the home team can go with its closer, and that is young Roberto Osuna for the Blue Jays in the ninth inning. And on the very first pitch, Andrus lifts one to left, and under it is Revere. And that allows Osuna to take a deep breath. Boy, the last time he came out, which was six days ago, blew a save, two thirds of an inning, two hits, two runs, two walks, and as John Gibbons was telling us, he has not been to the mound since then. And when a closer blows a save, he, boy, he wants to get right back out there. Youngest player to appear in the major leagues this year and assumes the closer's role. With a team that has World Series aspirations. He didn't become their closer until midseason, led the team with 20 saves. Good baseball genes, Uncle Antonio Osuna, big league pitcher, played a lot of baseball down in Mexico, so he's much more experienced than, say, a lot of your average American players. There's the defensive alignment in the infield. Steady diet of off speed stuff for Hamilton. Still dangerous if he gets that fastball. Two seamers swung over it, two and two. Kind of like Dave King. Remember Dave King? King Kong would strike out a hundred times, but yet you knew he was dangerous if he got that one pitch. Who could forget him? Yeah. Hit about 225, but with 40 homers. Full count. Josh Hamilton has not gotten the ball out of the infield in seven trips to the plate so far in this series. Full count to him. With a door on deck. And he fans. 0 for 4 with two strikeouts today. You want to talk about a guy with a close to unique both baseball and personal journey. Yeah. You're looking at him. I'll Josh say. Hamilton. And he looked at that outstanding off speed pitch from Osuna. Here's Odor. Not the biggest guy in the world but he had 16 home runs this year. Homered yesterday in game one of this series off David Price. Here's a chopper down to first. And the Blue Jays are going to have a chance to win it in the bottom of the ninth. When the guy who just made that unassisted play, Chris Colabello, will lead it off, followed by Russell Martin and Kevin Pillar.
combined calls of Sean McDonough and Tom Cheek the last time the Blue Jays won a postseason game 22 years ago. If it were to happen here today, it would be dramatic, but not quite that dramatic. Right. It would just even the division series that won the World Series. Have to do it off another tough, hard throwing relief pitcher, Jake Diekman. It's up there about 97. Part of that Cole Hamels trade that the Rangers acquired him from the Phillies. So here's Cole Abello, a double in three trips. And ball one. You look at the bench. For the Blue Jays, Ezekiel Carrera is a left-handed hitter. The other four bench players are all switch hitters. They have four switch hitters on their bench, which might come in handy if this goes on for a while. Cliff Pennington, Justin Smoke, who had 18 homers, Dalton Pompey, and their backup catcher, Deanna Navarro. Deakman's 1 1 pitch is a pop up into shallow center field, and it's to Shields for the first down. If you check the box scores of the first four postseason games, and we're seeing it again today, the run that the Rangers scored to tie it really was charged to Marcus Stroman, but a combination of power and control, the ability to strike out hitters and not allow base runners collectively. These relief pitchers have been phenomenal. Martin one for three, had an RBI single in the second. Well, a couple of stats collide. You have always said score four runs or more, yeah. you're more than likely to win. The Blue Jays did that 106 times this year, far and away the most in baseball. The next run could win this game. Well, this is the first game where actually both teams have reached that four run limit. On the other hand, the Blue Jays were just 15 and 28 in one run games. Worse than the major leagues in that category. So take your pick. The 2 0 pitch. Martin hit 240 for the year, but had 23 home runs. Kevin Pillar awaiting his turn. And getting down to the uh, bottom of the lineup instead of match up normally righty righty. We talked to Jeff Bannister about that. Kind of goes by field. Here's a guy who throws at 98 miles an hour. Doesn't make any difference if you're right or left. And then he comes with a, an 89 mile an hour, which might be slightly less than an average fastball for a changeup. Deakman, kind of a forgotten guy, but he came to the Rangers from the Phillies as part of the Cole Hamels trade. Hamels started this game. Deakman trying to keep them in it. Called strike three. Brought it up there at 98. Russell's, uh, and he's. He's catching a game right in front of Vic Carpaz the entire game, and he has not been happy with the last two called out on strikes. And let's see what he's unhappy about. Uh, he might have thought that was a little high, but uh, you know Carpaz hasn't been calling the high strike the whole game. But let's face it, both the starting pitchers have been keeping the ball down around the knees. Hasn't seen a lot of them. Now with two out and nobody on in the bottom of the ninth, it's Pilar who's one for three, had a double in the fifth. For the season, he had 12 home runs. If he reaches base, might be worth noting, he stole 25 in 29 attempts. <laughs> in the dugout, they're saying, dial it up a little sooner. I mean, they're swinging, but the ball's already making the sound in Jimenez's glove. Boy, this guy gets it up there. Upper 90s. That one nearly made triple digits. Clocked it at 99. 99 again. Yeah. A ball and two strikes. Just getting loose. Look 
looking to send it to extra innings. Not just yet. Hit 100, but missed the strike zone. Absolutely no set in stone roles the way most managers do in the modern game for his bullpen. So it's possible if Deakman gets through this inning, he pitches the 10th as well. If Bannister likes what he sees, tomorrow's an off day. He pitched two up yesterday. Now he said, when the phone rings, be on call. Could be any of them. Not just the eighth or the ninth. Nothing certain. Full count. Two perfect innings yesterday, the seventh and the eighth. He's retired the first two he's faced here in the ninth. And Pilar's going to make him work. Well, each each one of those 99, 98 mile an hour fastballs you see, you have at least a slightly better chance of timing it. He made some. Contact with that one and it fouled straight back means he wasn't particularly late on it. He knows what's coming. As Deepman tries to trip him. And struck him out with 99 mile per hour heat upstairs. He's faced nine hitters in this series. He's retired them all. He struck out two in this ninth. And we go to extra innings in Toronto. Today they closed the route on both occasions, and we welcome you back to this division series telecast on MLB Network, presented by Geico. Jim Cott and Ken Rosenthal are here, and we are headed for the tenth. <laughs> Roberto Osuna is still on the mound. Chris Jimenez is the leadoff man. 
Hanser Alberto is on deck. It is our close to 100% assumption that Adrian Beltre is not available for pinch hitting duty. Out of the game with a bad back, had to be removed from game one yesterday. Jimenez is 0 for 3. Lines it to center. Going back is Pilar. He's there. Yeah, when you think of his bad back, you think inability to run. Look at the lineup card down in the dugout. And some of the players available. But to, to swing the bat and injure it would not be worth the gamble for him. the Rangers. They're hoping with a couple of days of treatment, he'll be available when they get to Texas. So Hanser Alberto, who's at third for Beltre, had a sacrifice fly, struck out, fly out. Shortstop to Lewinsky. Two quick outs and here's Kenny. Guys, Alberto made the error earlier, but he's actually considered a pretty good fielder. In fact, he was named the top defensive shortstop in all of minor league baseball last year. The Rangers signed him in 2009 for $65,000 out of the Dominican Republic. Money well spent. So with two out and nobody on, it's to Shields, who was two for four yesterday in the opener, and is two for four today. A double and a single. He might, with a little luck, be four for four, but Colabello robbed him of hits twice. This year, 68 during the regular year. In his second inning of work in this playoff game. A little number picked up by Martin. The throw is there. Wow. Nice. And that was a tough throw because the Shields kind of had him shielded. Ooh. Sure did. To the bottom of the 10, and another chance for Toronto to win it.
coverage before and after every game. Highlights from every series and breakdowns from baseball's best analysts. Those in the studio late this afternoon and into the evening, Greg Amsinger, Mark DeRosa, and Dan Plesak today and tonight. Bottom of the 10th in Toronto. Ryan Goins, then back to the top for Ben Revere and Josh Donaldson, and Jake Diekman stays in there. And why not? Boy, he's like a strike throwing machine in the upper 90s. Bounce back to the mound on the comebacker. Goins is out of there. And I'm hearing a rumor that Albert Bell may be going all Kirk Gibson on us. Here's Ken Rosenthal. Interesting development, Bob. Adrian Beltre is taking swings underneath this ballpark right now, actually in the lower levels. Swing off a tee. Now, obviously, he went down yesterday. We didn't even think we'd see him at all today. But to the Rangers, nothing he does astonishes them. They were amazed he took that at bat yesterday in the pain that he was in. We'll see what happens. You know what would be really amazing? If, if not, uh, yeah, if, <laughs> exactly. If Albert Bell materialized from out of nowhere from his home in Louisiana, right. same initials, right. powerful right handed hitters, quick hands. I meant Adrian Beltre. Luckily, Ken Rosenthal knows what he's talking about. Well, and and deciphered what I meant. And the temptation for hitters in these extra inning games is I want to end it with a home run. When probably against these elite relievers that have. The ability to strike hitters out, a punt and a hit and run and a sacrifice fly might be your best option at scoring. Well, Revere has that kind of speed. The strike zone's been on wheels. Some pitchers complain that they don't get the high strike. Yeah. Deekman has no such complaint on that one. Whoa, him away at 96. Might not have seen that one, but he heard it. That'll quicken your pulse a little bit. Donaldson, who homered way back in the first, is on deck. Three and one. A chopper foul. And that's that not really a Ben Revere is has a lot of plate discipline the three one left hand pitcher Donaldson on deck. Chase the pitch out of the strike zone. You have a, a right hander Tolleson getting ready who's been their closer the last part of the season he's ready to come in against Donaldson. And the three two Revere will do it again. Official attendance 49,716. And reveal a little bloop on the infield that's caught by Andrews. So Donaldson will bat with two out of the bases empty. Sure, the wheels are turning in the mind of Jeff Bannister. Is we saw it with Brett Cecil, where John Gibbons allowed him to face a right hand hitter. Napoli came up with a game tying hit, and with that uh, high octane fastball, he has a lot of confidence in Deepman being being able to get it past the uh, potential American League MVP. Well, in two games in this series, he's faced 11 hitters and retired them all. Throws it past Donaldson at 98. Three infield 
Fielders on the left side. Donaldson 41 homers for the year. A league leading 123 RBIs. A laser beam of a home run. To dead center field in the first inning today. And we'll go to the 11th. This Division Series telecast on MLB Network is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And sponsored in part by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. And by Expedia, connecting you to the people and places that matter. John Gibbons goes deeper into his bullpen. Mark Lowe got a couple innings out of his uh, closer. Now we'll begin to see the... No disrespect, but kind of a second tier relievers of the Blue Jays. And if it goes deeper still, they might have to dip into guys listed as starters. Which we saw with uh, Derek Holland and Colby Lewis warming up. Shin Su Chu, RBI single back in the first. One for three with a sacrifice thrown in. Interesting they play two way around you see the three infielders in the right field side yet they're pitching him outside now they move to a whiskey over the other way and they're going to pitch him inside. He had 22 homers this year. One and one. He was one for six in his career against Lowe with a couple of strikeouts. One and two. Now for Toronto, 32 years old. ZRA was 1.96 this year. 
struck out 10 for every nine innings of work. They got him from the Mariners just before the trade deadline for three minor leaguers. And he's posted their bullpen. Full count to Chu. Oh, they are really trying to pound that ball inside on Chu. Don't want him to take it the other way. Originally, they had all three outfield infielders on the first base side. Now they have him, uh, Tulowitzki, over, still playing him exaggerated pull. A lot of room in left center. And he comes back to fan two. Check again with Ken Rosenthal. Bob, Mark Lowe had an idea that he might be traded. He actually brought his passport with him when the Mariners were in Minnesota. That's in contrast to Troy Tulowitzki, who didn't have his passport when he was traded to the Blue Jays, had to get it flown to him from his home in Las Vegas. Have to be prepared. Here's the Prince. By the way, I'm not sure that every Ranger fan was all that thrilled when Lowe was reacquired because it was he who infamously gave up the David Freeze walk-off homer in Game 6 of the World Ooh. Series in St. Louis in 2011. And there's a swing like I was talking about where hitters have one thing in mind. Let me end it with a home run. <laughs> Big swing by Prince Fielder. We're looking not just to hit one there, but to launch one. Now Fielder in an 0-2 hole. Prince is one for four, had a first inning single. It's been hard to figure what's a strike and what's a ball. That's a ball. That's a ball. If that tracks is is accurate there, John Gibbons commenting from time to time. Now back inside. And a full count. That's going to finish Prince Fielder's afternoon. And Will Venable, whom they got during the season from San Diego, will run for it. Will's dad, Max, a former big leader. Here's Napoli, who came into the game in the eighth and delivered a pinch hit single, batting for Mitch Morgan. who appeared in the World Series for the Rangers in 2010 and 2011. Now opposing them in the 2015 playoffs. Mike Napoli was his teammate then. And there is Beltre, bat in hand. Subject of debate all day long. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, no. but some of these fans certainly think so. 
as does Russell Martin. success rate for his career as a base dealer and this season he stole 16 and 17 attempts made a little bluff move there if you're guessing with the pitcher and catcher say this could be a breaking ball this would be a good one to steal on. not going two and two the uh, Toronto catchers that's been another area of improvement they were 28th last year in throwing out runners and they improved that to the top of the league. Both Russell Martin and Navarro, who's the backup catcher, said they they learned a lot from Yadier Molina to help them with their footwork and their throwing. No one better to learn from. Full count. Venable, the pinch runner at first with one out. And top of the 11th, tied at four. And you would expect he would uh, be running here. I mean, could set up a strikeout throwout situation, but I'm sure Jeff Bannister liked to get the infielders on the move, have the runner go. Venable goes, and it's fouled off. Trot into second. Back to back walks. First to fielder. Now to Napoli. And the pitching coach, Pete Walker, on his way to the mound. Mentioned the composite record of the uh, relief pitchers in the four postseason games so far has been phenomenal in their ability to limit base runners and strike out hitters. Uh, they've only given up four runs, they've all been solo home runs. None of them game winners. But now with uh, base on balls here back to back, which low on the Blue Jays in a little stickier situation. The Rangers have been, have been the better of the two situational teams. I mentioned the home run power of the Blue Jays. Both teams have benefited from some gift runs today. But the Rangers are better at uh, putting the runners in motion and making contact. Venable runs well, and Napoli not so much. Broken back ground ball. They get one. Can they turn it? No. So now Venable at third and Andrews at first with two out. I'm not sure if Goins was looking in at the Ranger dugout, but Napoli gave him some kind of a slide. I don't think you are supposed to be able to slide through the bag. See, he jumped and went past the bag. No damage done to Goins. I didn't get the double play, but Goins kind of glanced at Napoli as he was trotting back to the dugout. Well, Josh Hamilton. Is four for eight with a double and a homer lifetime against Mark Lowe, but he's not going to get a chance to face him. Gibbons will remove Lowe, and Aaron Loop will come in.
So Hamilton, who had hammered Mark Lowe, in contrast, is 0 for 5 with two strikeouts against Aaron Loop in his career. And Loop's first one is bounced foul. Yeah, Josh just has no plate discipline right now. Very uh, confused at the plate. That ball was way in off the plate. And again, this situation. They're going to count on Russell Martin to be able to break the uh, to block these breaking balls loop the side armor probably come with that sidearm hook. This ball is hit in the air at deep center field back goes Pilar and he gets there. Decent contact nothing to show for it to the bottom of the 11. Still a 4 4 game. Welcome back to this Division Series telecast on MLB Network presented by Geico with Jim Cotton, Ken Rosenthal, Bob Costas at the Rogers Center in Toronto, which is across the street from the Aquarium. Crowd reminds me of a little bit of Minnesota crowd in 1991 with the Homer Hankies. Yeah. Well, Tollison's done a great job for the Rangers as their closer, but of all their relievers, he has been the most home run prone. He's given up nine of them. Twenty-seven year old from Allen, Texas, went to Baylor University, faces Bautista, who obviously could end it with a single swing. The figures for Tollison. And as we mentioned earlier, although he is their closer for the moment, Bannister has said, we have a no rolls bullpen. It's whatever seems like the right play at any given time, especially in the postseason. Here he is in the 11th. Big cut and he fouled it back. And he got the pitch. You know, hitters will call that keyhole. 2 0 count. I said, I'm going to look for a pitch in a certain area. Batista got it right there. Look at the target outside, but the pitch comes up in middle of the plate in. That was one where he could have done some serious damage. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Woo! In there. Oh, 
Encarnacion on deck, and then Tulowitzki. High, and I mean very high pop up on the infield. Who's going to take it? It's Andrews. He's glaring in at uh, Vic Carpaza, but that. Uh, Shouldn't get an argument on that pitch. It was called a strike on the 2-1 uh, pitch. And Carnacion, 39 homers for the year. 0 for 3 with an intentional walk in game 2. And Bautista venting in the Jays' dugout. Three infielders on the left side. Shift track in the upper right hand corner of your screen shows you that. Outfield very deep. you that relaxed you know he's got his hands kind of close to his body he gives you that relaxed look like he's not quite ready to hit you mentioned Albert Bell a few innings ago you know he <laughs> inadvertently had his, he, he had the <laughs> fastest hands and that that's kind of what in Carson in Carson Internacion does from right there Call strike three dropped the breaking ball in there and froze Encarnacion A hanging curve that never really got the, never really went across the plate. He might have, Jimenez might have caught it behind home plate. Vic's having a, a tough day back there, according to the players. A ball to Tulowitzki. Tulo 0 for 4 with a pair of strikeouts. Tolleson trying to send it to the 12th. To Lewinsky trying to end it with that swing. Yeah, all big swings.
third game of the division series between the Astros and the Royals from Houston is on the MLB Network 4 o'clock Eastern 3 o'clock Central presented by Geico on Sunday. And the Astros have taken a three nothing lead in the second inning of game two so they could if that holds up head back home up 2 0 and with Dallas Keuchel set to pitch game three. Aaron Loop continues to work as we go to the 12 for the Blue Jays. Facing Rugnet Odor. Who's 0 for 3 with a walk. But with some base running exploits that have distinguished him today. Yeah, unusual defense for Toronto against a left hand hitter and a sidearm left hand pitcher. They have Donaldson at third, normal position, but they leave that hole open way, big hole between second and Donaldson. But so far, their pitchers, as the case there, have done a good job of running that ball in on the hands. I'm sure Odor right now like to get something just out over the beam, not Donaldson moves over, where they've got all kinds of information teams do. And Odor skies one to left. Here's Revere toward the line. And he makes the catch. They have all kinds of information compiled. My manager Whitey Herzog, who you, you know, used to do it with a colored pencil. But yep. Now they know exactly where hitters tend to hit it against certain pitchers. It's like John Gibbons with the right hander due up will go to his right hander coming out of the bullpen. Tomorrow's an off day. As they'll travel to Texas, but still. A lot of guys will have thrown a fair number of pitches by the time this one's over with. Sanchez out of the bullpen. Chris Jimenez to the plate where he's 0 for 4. Sanchez is 23 years old, started the season as a starting pitcher, then returned from the disabled list and was sent to the bullpen. That ball was hit hard, but down to third base, Donaldson doing what he does and across the diamond for the second out. Now we've uh, we've talked about the improved defense bound by these Blue Jays, so staff gas powers by Amazon Web Services. We'll give you a look at it. Batista Nome, more for his home run power. Good first step. Ran a decent route. 
and made a great catch there. And then Pilar, who can really track him down, got a good first step, ran 78 feet to track that one down in right center field. So even though there have been some fielding mistakes in this game, there's also been some good defensive plays. Hans or Alberto. In the lineup for Adrian Beltre, 0 for 3 with a sacrifice fly. Aaron Sanchez worked a perfect inning in game one. Sinker, and he has an overhand curve to go along with it. These fans really were into it the first couple innings, like going to a three act play, and all the excitement was <laughs> in the first act. Now they're just kind of holding their breath, waiting to uh, see if the Blue Jays could break through and hold the Rangers down. Alberto hangs in there well. Whether they know the exact figures, they get the general idea of what they might be up against if they don't pull this one out. 71 teams have trailed 0 2 in a best of five postseason series. Only eight of them have come back to win, and only two after losing the first two games at home. The Yankees in 0 1 against Oakland, the Giants more recently in 2012 against the Reds. Calabello, Martin, and Pilar, the scheduled hitters in the bottom half for the Jays. Bottom of the 12. Sean Tollison still in there. Chris Colabella to start it. Doubled in the second. Hitless in three at bats since then. Hit toward the middle and through for a leadoff single. Second hit. And now Dalton Pompey will come in to run for it.
Chris Colabella with the play made in the first inning is the main reason the Blue Jays are still in this game. It could have gotten disastrous in the first inning without that play he made. John Gibbons will go to his bench with his speed guy. Every team seems to have one in the postseason. Pompey is a Canadian native. There haven't been that many, but yep. enough. And when they played for the Expos in the past, or the Blue Jays in years past, or at present, they're especially appreciated. Here's one of them, Russell Martin. Good man to have in this situation for Toronto. Handles the bat well. He's, he's not apt to take that big swing and try to end it. He's got a nice hole over there between first and second. Just a matter of whether John Gibbons would opt to send Pompey or give Russell Martin a chance to advance it. Pompey dives back. Spent that much time in the big leagues, six steals and seven attempts for his career. Well, Russell did take a pretty big swing. I thought we might see a shorten up of the bat and try to poke it to right field in this situation. Using close to what would be called a spin move. First base umpire Alfonso Marquez. You have to step toward first and then throw. You can't just spin and throw over. That's borderline ball. And a high pop. Who's going to take it? In fair ground, it's Alberto. First out, Martin not able to get the ball on the ground and advance the runner. That would increase the chances of Pompey trying to steal second right here. So now Pilar into do a double play on which a run scored, double grounded out, struck out. Strike one. Again, he has to dive back. 
pitching staff stretched, nerves frayed. That's Bottom of the 12. That's what good base runners will do. They'll take two strides and a dive. That's they think they can do that. Have a, have a base stealers lead and still get back to first on a pickoff throw. He's diving back, but a lot of these are not all that close. No. Chased it. Oh, and two. I, I think what happens here, and I, I've heard hitters talk about it, is he's equal saying that, that pitch was high, wasn't it? Yes, it was. The, the throws to first base and the slow in the game down kind of disrupts some hitters' rhythm. Are you standing out there as a goal to first? He's coming home, and that would look like it kind of surprised Pilar. Sometimes with all the video that hitters look at, they learn. They say this guy always throws me a slider with two strikes. So they're they're actually guessing with two strikes location. That ball caught the inside corner, and he was diving toward the outside corner. When you juggle the bat like that twice, you're walking the borderline of showing the umpire up. Pompey goes, and he's going to steal it without a throw. So now a single. Could send everybody at the Rogers Center or just about everybody home happy. I imagine there are a few Ranger rooters here. But Hamilton, not many. Hamilton, the Shields. Shoot all coming in a few strides. Goins 0 for 3 with a sacrifice. A bouncing ball. Foul ball. Even though a base hit here could win it, I think you're right, Kitty. Some of the energy has come out of this crowd. I mean, they were roaring from the first pitch, and no question. Seems like they're a little drained now. Once Napoli got that game tying hit, that changed the whole atmosphere. Because it was such a fever pitch, and Strowman was dealing. And that's what they were waiting for to cap off a win. They had gone 22 years between postseason appearances. Longest span among the four major North American team sports. Now that dubious distinction belongs to the Buffalo Bills. It's 15 years. Pompey breaks for third. They're not going to make a play on him. He has stolen second and third. Not inconsequential. Infield hit. Error, yep. pass ball, wild pitch, balk. There's Batista. Batista, he's given the signs now. <laughs> and the one two pitch is hit right at Odor. And we will go to the 13th. Jays get a man within 90 feet of victory, but we play on.
Oh, that boy shoot a great at bat, Pop. What that boy hit? It went and start oh. fouling and then came back, I don't know. We gotta run out of it. Hey, that hey, boy. Hey, hey, get it, get it, get it, get it away from a Hector Ortiz, the Rangers' first base coach, chatting up some of their hitters and runners during the course of the game. Aaron Sanchez remains on the mound as we go to the 13th. Justin Smoke is in the game now, off the bench, and playing first base. Colabello. Got a hit to start the 12th. Pompey ran for him, stole two bases. Now Smoke is in the game at first base. <laughs> two and two to Delano to Shields. Now Cola Bella's had a great game, but the Blue Jays really consider Smoke one of the better fielding first basemen in the league. Shields is two for five. Runs out full. Top-notch umpire. He's probably saying to Russell Martin right there, "What was wrong with that pitch? I thought it was a strike." But man, we are seeing some hitters' reactions. Let's see where this was. Where it was, with all due respect, was out of the strike zone. Yeah. Unless where you see it kind of tickle that lower edge, but again, you don't know the accuracy. Is that where it goes across the plate or where the catcher catches it? Two fouls it back. There have been some disputes where we thought that Carapaza had it right. Yeah. I'm not so sure he did that time. Right. The best umpires are the ones that tell the hitters, hey, they didn't come here to see you walk. Swing the bats. You always get a better game if you're strike conscious as an umpire than ball conscious. And right now, Vic looks like he's been caught in between a lot. Chopper. And there's the second out. So Lewitsky to smoke. That's why our, our great late friend who you knew so well and I got a chance to, Kirby Puckett in Minnesota, said, I'm never leaving my fate in the hands of the umpire. If it's close, I'm swinging. <laughs> Kirby was a little bit like Yogi Berra. Right. It looked good to him. It didn't matter if it was in the strike zone. He was swinging. All right, so here's Will Venable, who ran for Prince Fielder after Prince drew a walk in the 11th and then stayed in the game as the DH. Venable split the year between San Diego and Texas. He has occasional power. Six home runs. In the bottom of the 13th, Revere, Donaldson, Bautista, if anybody gets on, and Carnacion. If you're Texas, you have to say to yourself, how many times can we go through that kind of murderer's row and get away with it? The 3 0 pitch is in there. Well, and the answer to that, as you mentioned earlier, they have not won a lot of low scoring games. They haven't won many one run games. And they're not the kind of team that does what Texas did yesterday. A base hit, hit and run, bunch, stole bait. They're just up there playing home run derby and taking their chances that somebody will run into one. Now a bit of life at the Rogers Center. Hoping that Sanchez can finish it off in the top of the 13th and set the stage yet again.
broken bat, but it finds a spot. A two out hit. Got to send him on the first pitch. Didn't get it on the barrel. Wow. There's not much of a sweet spot in today's bats. They're light, they're laminated, thin handle, and they splinter easily. That had a little of that corkscrew spin to it. No chance for Goins to get it. All right, so here's Napoli. Pinch hit RBI single and a walk. And a swing designed to end the game. Yeah. Instead, fouls it back. Seen a lot of swings that say, Let me see if I can get one in the gap to right center. <laughs> oh, and two to Napoli. Now he's got to go. <laughs> no complaint about that one. Guarding the line at third, rest of the defense more or less straight up. Didn't miss by much. Russell Martin tried to frame it, held it there, and all Gibbons can do is shake his head. I'm, I'm surprised uh, with an 0-2 count. You didn't see the runner take off. That, that had, you know, is that a strike or a ball? I mean, part of the ball's got the strike zone. Should be a strike. If that's Not going on the one two pitch. Up the middle. Goins makes the play and throws him out. Nice backhanded pickup and across the body throw. That retires Napoli and sends us to the bottom of the 13th. MLB Network is presented by Masterpass, your shortcut to priceless. And sponsored in part by Mazda, Driving Matters, and by Esurance, official sponsor of Major League Baseball. Keone Keller. 
Gets the ball now in the bottom of the 13th. Gave up a solo homer to Bautista yesterday. First run he'd allowed since late July. In his final 19 regular season appearances, he was 2 0 in 16 innings of work without allowing a single run. He's got an outstanding overhand curveball and throws in the upper 90s. Doesn't everybody coming out of the bullpen these days? Revere has a couple of hits and a stolen base. Yeah, the only downside with Kila has been his base on ball total. Plenty of power, doesn't give up a lot of hits. But he is subject to walk a couple hitters here and there. And behind Revere, 2 0. Gives you an idea of, again the, the theme in the extra inning. See, Revere has good plate discipline, makes contact. This is his second at bat now. He's had a hitter's count and chased the pitch out of the strike zone. Normal game, early in the game, he doesn't do that. He's much more patient. It's an indication that everybody wants to end it with a long ball. Lots of different ways to be a hero. That's not the only one. Toward the hole, backhanded by Napoli. High throw on the toss, but they record the out. Kelly got over there. Yeah, and Revere quickly checking because the danger there is a pitcher. You're trying to feel for the bag. You see the catcher say, Get over there. Now he's feeling for the bag, and you want to try to touch the inside of the bag so the runner doesn't catch it with his spike. Nice play by Keelan. Jump, catch, tap the bag, get out of the way. Some four hours ago, Josh Donaldson had a first inning home run off Cole Hamels. Yeah, it's nice they start these extra inning games early. Yeah. Almost clairvoyant. <laughs> Marcus Stroman out to cheer on his teammates. What a performance he put on. Once Fielder started the game, he will not finish it. Chance of MVP, MVP. Adrian Beltre had hoped to play today. Here's a drive deep down the left field line. Which oh, could have put an end to it. The and both benches empty. I don't know if Keela said something to him, but I saw Donaldson uh, use some reading his lips we won't show you. <laughs> but uh, I don't know what that could be all about. Of course, the common rule among teams, everybody comes out of the bullpen, shake hands. I used to look for Willie Stargell. A friendly man. Yeah, say, hey, Willie, how's it going? Let's break this thing up. <laughs> oh. Well, Donaldson stood there. And maybe Kella said something to him. We can only see Donaldson's half of it now. And Bautista is quick to get into it. It's a curveball. Kila is lucky he got back. That was a hanger. And Jimenez kind of pushing his young pitcher away. 
You need to know exactly what was said and what words were used to be sure what might have set somebody off. On the other hand, yeah. Donaldson is an established star who might be the MVP. Kella is a 22 year old, a promising 22 year old, but there is kind of a pecking order in the league. Now, I think it might have been about Josh standing in the box watching it. But what else was he going to do? Yeah. It, was, it was either gone or it was foul. Right. right. Could be off the wall. You better hustle. Yeah, that might have been it. Get out of the box. I mean, the only thing I hollered on something like that was, "Please go foul," because I'm <laughs> lucky I got it back. That's right. Keller should be looking skyward, saying, "Thank you." <laughs> yeah. Now his one-two pitch. It's the better of Donaldson. They'll have to throw to first. As Cecil from the left side had a wipeout curveball, that's what Keela has from the right side. That, I mean, that was a 58 footer there. And look what happens. The whole infield oh, yeah. kind of circles around Keela. Donaldson didn't even look at him going off, but Jimenez, as soon as the out was recorded, walked toward the mound to create a little barrier between Donaldson and his pitcher just in case. He's a young kid. He came out of a tough area where he's used to a lot of violence. High energy I'm sure and, and they just want to make sure hey slow things down. See instead of even going toward Donaldson right there the smarter thing would be just walk over toward third base. Try not to incite anything more and that's where his teammates came in to intercede smartly. Keller was born in L.A. Spent lots of time in Hawaii growing up. His father's family is from Hawaii. Eventually settled in Seattle and went to Everett Community College in the Seattle area. So the dust up with Donaldson is behind him. But now he's got to deal with Bautista who lit him up yesterday. Yeah he threw two good curves and then tried to throw a high fastball by him but it came in about belt high. And it went out sky high. Three infielders on the left side with two out and nobody on. That's kind of mean spirited if the fans are 56 foot curveball bounced up. Jimenez couldn't glove it. And I think it caught Carpaza in the hope in the chest protector. As long as this day is for the players, it's longer for the umpires who don't sit down between innings and especially for the plate umpire. One and one. You can say be careful with Donaldson, but then you know Bautista's on deck. Be careful with Bautista, but then Encarnacion is on deck. Two and one. have that great overhand curveball. If he drops it in on you on 3-2, you tip your hat and say good pitch, but 3-1 count. Let's see if we can pick up the sign. 3 would be a breaking ball. Walked him. Encarnacion is hitless today. He fly to deep center, out on a comebacker, grounded a third, walked intentionally, struck out.
we've talked a little bit about the outfield defense in different situations. Opposed to the other day, a few innings ago, might have been the other day, winning <laughs> run on second, they were shallow. Now you see what they're doing. They're playing deep, no doubles defense. They don't want a ball to get to the wall for an extra base hit and allow Batista to score. He has just enough room in front of the fence. Wow. Well, on we go to the 14. LCS World Series that either of these teams in terms of innings has ever participated in but these are the longest division series games in history 18 innings by innings 18 innings just a year ago epic game between the Giants and the Nationals yeah, those 18 inning jobs those are the longest but down the dugout you're saying well open up a new can of pitchers for going <laughs> another four or five and uh, fortunately the Blue Jays have a Pretty good veteran they're bringing in for this inning. Yeah, Latroy Hawkins, who has seen more than his share. Yeah. But it, I think what everybody wants to hit the home run we keep talking about it, but I'm waiting for one of these two teams to play a little situational baseball and see if they can just, you know, walk, bunt, sacrifice. Everybody taking big off balance swings. The Hawk has been around. He was a top draft pick of the Twins. Must be 20 years ago. Back in the Tory Hunter days, and he's developed into a very serviceable relief pitcher. Elvis Andrus is six for nine lifetime against Latroy Hawkins. Earlier, we saw the youngest pitcher in the major leagues in Roberto Osuna. This is the oldest player, pitcher or position player, active in the major leagues right now, 42 year old Latroy Hawkins. In fact, he made his major league debut about 10 weeks after his teammate Roberto Osuna was born. How about that? He's got sweaters older than Osuna. His 2 1 to Andrews <laughs> is in there. How long has Latroy Hawkins been around? The batter he faced most often in his career is still Frank Thomas. 
He's faced a dozen players at least 30 times in his career, and the only one who's still active is A Rod. The 2 2. Hit in the air to right, and it's right at Bautista. Well, I would think, Bob, with, with Hawkins, the one thing John Gibbons can do if he pitches effectively. 42, how much longer are you going to pitch? Leave me out there for the duration. Yeah. <laughs> what the, what, what the heck? Pitches. We're not counting pitches on this guy. <laughs> he, he may be in for more than an inning or two if it goes that long. Josh Hamilton. Who did hit the ball hard his last time up, lining to center, has not had many good swings of late. <laughs> 0 for 5 in this one, hitless in the series. He's, he's one of those hitters, as I mentioned before, like, like with Dave Kingman. When I faced a guy like Dave Kingman, you say, no, he's probably going to swing and miss eight or nine pitches, but if you make that one mistake, on. Hawkins, like all the other pitchers, throwing him just a lot of off-speed stuff, anticipating that he'll he'll chase. There you see the infield defense decidedly to pull with Goins and Smoke. And the two-one from Hawkins. Evens the count of two and two. Age hasn't slowed Hawkins that much. His ERA is right around three and nearly 200 appearances since turning 40. He was with Colorado. He came to the Jays as part of the Tulowitzki trade right around the deadline. Smoke right on the line at first. Hamilton sends one to the shallow right. Bautista chasing after it and makes the catch on the run. Bautista has had a good afternoon in the outfield. Let's go to Ken Rosenthal. Guys, we won't know exactly what happened between Donaldson and Keller until we talk to the people involved with that. But the feeling among some on the Rangers bench is that Donaldson may have been upset that Kayla quick pitched him. Jim, let's take a look right here. Oh. I'll defer to your expertise, Jim. What do you think? Well, you don't have to wait. You don't have to. There wasn't anybody on base. It's just like a windup. I'd do the same thing. That's not quick pitching. It's pitching quick. And there's no rules against that. Well, it wasn't exist as if uh, Donaldson didn't get a good piece of it. Yeah. I mean, they said that about Cueto, who's struggled a bit lately. But you know, once he steps in the box and the in the umpire, everything's okay. You can deliver that ball as quickly as possible. That's what you want to try to do as a pitcher: is destroy that rhythm of the hitter. I didn't see anything wrong that Keller did there. Odor facing a man twice his age, 21 and 42. Maybe the geezer is teaching him a lesson yeah, or two. Hawk says you can't catch up with my high cheese, kid. Fifth trip to the postseason for Latroy Hawkins. Got to the World Series in 07 with the Rockies, but they were swept by the Red Sox. Still looking for his first World Series title. And time is running out. Hit to the left side. There's only one guy there, but that's all it takes. The throw is not in time. Not in time. Donaldson made a nice play, but Odor, who runs well, broke quickly from the box and beat it. Yeah, great speed. What I'm surprised at with this play, you mentioned it was a nice play, but I thought Josh, let's see, I thought maybe he had time to plant his foot right there. Instead of throwing on the run, he's not going to be as accurate or get as much on it. It looked like he had time to stop with that right foot turn and get a lot more on it. Nice play on the receiving end by Smoke just catching the ball. And now again the threat of a stolen base becomes a factor. Jimenez wearing an 0 for 5 collar, all of which could be forgotten if he delivers a big hit here. 
Odor today has gone from first to third on an infield out. Scored from third on a very shallow sacrifice fly with a tremendous tag slide rather to evade the tag of Russell Martin and now beaten out an infield hit. So his best work has been done with his legs at least today yesterday he had a home run. Two and oh. At age 42. Troy Hawkins fastball still averages about 93. Alberto is on deck. A little bloop that will land harmlessly in foul territory and nobody anywhere close to it. Well, you mentioned Odor's legs and it's so much fun to watch a young player play this game with reckless abandon. He's looking over his shoulder for a steal sign. Sometimes uh, they steal with a lot of speed. He will get a stop sign. You're on your own until we tell you to absolutely stop. Again, uh, kind of a free run to try to steal it. Two and two. Now this Hawkins is a marvel. Broke in with the Twins in 1995. He has been with 11 teams since then. Yeah. In a more than 20 season big league career. I know he's got a former teammate if he's watching the game pulling for him and that's Torrey Hunter. Broke in right shortly after Torrey Hunter was drafted by the Twins. Two out. The 2-2 two -two pitch. That's going to make it through for a base hit. Odor rounds second, and he's going to hold there. Bautista throws behind him, and he gets back. Well, sometimes that reckless abandon will make your manager's uh, heart beat a little faster. He was looking at the third base coach. All you need to do as a runner, just take a glance at right field. He knew there was, had to know there's no chance of going to third on that one. And almost rounded the base too far. Good hitting by Jimenez. And almost too far, and he just gets the foot in ahead of the tag. They want to check it. Well, his foot did bounce off the bag, it appeared there, for a split second. Well, you get, what'd you say, two challenges. That's the second one. If uh, Golans gave some kind of a signal, let's take a look to see what we can see. Now his foot is on it. And once you're past the seventh inning or in extra innings, you can ask the crew chief to review, and if it's a, a reasonable request, almost always it's going to be granted. I, I think they might call him out. I mean, we can't tell whether the glove applied, but his foot lost contact with the bag briefly. And that's just a young base running mistake if he is in fact out. Young player, you, you don't really need to round the bag and look at the coach. You see Tulowitzki's tag now right there. The foot come now. Does he have the glove in contact with his leg? Back at command center, they may have enough angles to be able to tell that. The fans here at the Rogers Center with the replay up on the big board in center field are cheering. They're convinced. Yep. But you almost that the call is going to be out. You almost need a right field shot with whatever they had in command center to be able to see whether Tulowitzki really applied the tag when the foot was off the bag. Second base umpire who ruled him safe, at least initially, Marvin Hudson.
That shows you how tough a call it is for umpires at real speed because we have to look at it time and time again and we don't have all the angles and you still can't tell. With two out here in the top of the 14th infield single by Odor opposite field ground ball single by Jimenez Odor round second thinks about going to third decides to return to second makes it safely but the question now did he lose contact with the bag for just the split second that it would require perhaps for Tulowitzki to tag him and as Jeff Bannister said they sent Odor down early in the year. See, I don't know if the tag is on. Sure, looked like it. Oh, they called him safe, and he played very cautiously. And Jeff Bannister said, "We want the other guy to come back. Go to the minor leagues and play with that reckless abandon, which he's what he's doing." Because now with Odor at second, the Blue Jays will play their outfield. You see Batista waving his arm there. Play the outfield shallow. They want a shot at throwing him out on a ground single. Strike one to Alberto, who's 0 for 4 with a sacrifice fly. Potential irony brewing here with Beltre benched because of the bad back. And with Alberto having opened the door to an early two run inning. By botching an easy ground ball, he's now in a position to be a hero. And he lines it to center field. It'll drop for a hit. Pilar is on. Here's the throw to the plate. It is not in time. Odor scores. And what he has done with his legs today may be enough to send the Rangers home with a 2 0 lead. No sooner did you mention Alberto subbing for Adrian Beltre, making a costly error early in the game. And I mean, Old Door, you talk about going in with reckless abandon. I mean, he went in the whole plate and rolled across the plate. Another look at it. No stopping him. Oh, yeah. Wow. He has been an exciting player to watch here these two days. Again, uses his body to get out of the way of Russell Martin's tag and reaches out with his hands to touch the plate. That's two times he's been able to score like that. The ball was hit hard and it came up well for Pilar, but with two out, Odor, who can really run, was off on contact and he beats the tag from Russell Martin. See, there's that new rule of not making contact. Years ago, if the catcher was on the plate, we would have seen a Pete Rose Ray Fossey collision where the runner would run into the catcher. And now they, they dive around the catcher. There's Alberto celebrating uh, with his teammates, not the win, but at least they had a lead. So John Gibbons. Goes to his bullpen. Ooh. Liam Hendricks, who has uh, been one of his starters, to try to stop the bleeding. And, uh, here's where you have to, if you're Hendricks, you have to kind of dig deep into your concentration here and say, now wait a minute, they have the lead. If they got men on second and third, I got to get a big out here, keep it a one run game. Give my team a reasonable shot. In the bottom half of the 14, Troy Hawkins had retired the first two. And an infield hit by Odor, an opposite field single by Jimenez, and a hard line single to center by Alberto. It makes it 5 4 Texas. Well, the, the Rangers in these two games so far have done more advancing base runners, situational hitting, than the Blue Jays have, and that might be. One reason why the Blue Jays' record, as great as it is, has not been good in one run games or low scoring games. Not that this is a low scoring game, but so far it's a one run game. And Beltre beaming in the dugout. Yeah. Maybe they can win this one without me. Last time we checked, the Astros were winning again at Kansas City. Colby Rasmus had homered again, hit one in the wild card game at Yankee Stadium. One in each of the first two games 
at the K. So both Texas teams have a chance to head home up to nothing over division winners against whom they were underdogs. We shall see. Delino to Shields. And he has gone back to an old fashioned pitcher's windup. Swing in the arms. One and two to the Shields. How long have we been here? This is his seventh at bat of the game. Two from Hendricks. Slow roller. Tulowitzki on the run with the flip. He beat it out. He beat it out. And the Rangers tack on another. I mean, this this that's why he had so many bun hits. I mean, this guy has got sprinter speed. Sometimes on Statcast we show you the speed. This guy hits 21 miles an hour. He's up there in Billy Hamilton territory and got out of the box. And I mean. The ball was played as well as you can. He just beat it with his getting out of the box quickly and with sheer speed. Check this out. And remember, he's coming from the right side of the box, but no hesitation. And he's got a bad knee. Clapping his hands as he crossed the bag after seeing the safe sign. And it's six to four. Two cuts and misses. The game becomes more and more international. Hendricks from Australia faces Chu from South Korea. Close one by him at 98. I tried double steal right here is the, the Blue Jays back on their heels. You send to Shields. Try to make Russell Martin commit. I don't think he will, but it's worth a try. He is going. Martin will not commit. No. But you know what's the there, there's no loss there. There's no downside. So he steals it standing up. Death by a thousand cuts for the Jays in this inning. Four singles, two of them of the infield variety. Martin blocks it. Two on, two out, two in, a two two count, and a two run lead. Three and two. Will Venable, who occupies the DH spot, is on deck. For whatever it's worth, Chu is three for eight lifetime against Hendricks. In the air, shallow center field, Pilar tracks it down. The 
but the damage in all likelihood has been done. Two runs in the top of the 14th. Last chance for the Jays. Down 6-4. telecast on MLB Network presented by Geico with Jim Cobb and Ken Rosenthal. Bob Costas at the Rogers Center in Toronto. Bottom of the 14th. Three outs left for the Jays. Otherwise they head south of the border down 0-2. Ross Ollendorf trying to finish it off. Quite a moment for Ross Ollendorf. We'll check out the changes the Rangers made first. Drew Stubbs is in center field. In place of Delino de Shields. And Ollendorf out of Austin, Texas, and Princeton University. <laughs> Drops a curveball in there and gets ahead 0 2. You know, you get to age 33, was actually on the Yankees postseason roster eight years ago. You try to figure out a way, you see him keeping that body in motion. A little deceptive wind up and a pretty good overhand curve. Like that. Tulowitzki at the plate, just three for 13 against Ollendorf, but two of the three hits were homers. They need a base runner first before a homer can do them any good. Justin Smoke on deck, then Russell Martin. This game, but they're going to be tempted. You see the catcher reach for. He's sitting outside, and you can see clearly. Let's get a look at it, the overhead shot. I mean, you can see the distance between the plate and the ball. Vic's just having a tough afternoon. Here's Justin Smoke, switch hitter. First at bat of the game, and sarcastic cheers. As the call is ball one. Smoke hit 18 homers and fewer than 300 at bats. I don't know if I've been in a place where the umpire gets a rousing ovation for calling the ball. Except in Philadelphia back when uh, 
Bert Hooten had a little trouble doing that. The Donaldson looking on. Hollendorf trying to put a horror behind him. He last pitched Saturday against the Angels and took the loss and the blown save in that almost unbelievable 11 to 10 defeat that forced them to the last day of the season and forced them to use Cole Hamels to wrap up the division. I was watching that game. And he was one strike away. Yep. I believe with a four run lead. Maybe five. And just couldn't get that last out. Had to go back to all those philosophy classes he took at Princeton. Try and get a grip on the situation. Spent a lot of time at Round Rock. The, uh, Rangers Farm Clubs this year haven't been in the big league since 2013. Want to talk about for the love of the game? Yeah. I even went back to an old uh, love of the game windup. Billy yep. Chapel. That's old school. Billy yeah. Chapel, Kevin Costner, and for love of the game. There's the curve. It works, doesn't it? Puts two K's in the book right away. But you know, if you've got a Princeton education. And you're 33 years old, and you're knocking around, and you're in minor league cities. Yeah. There isn't really, realistically, a pot of gold there. What there is, is a love of the game. Right. And now here he is in October. And if the Rangers keep playing like this, there may be a little pot of gold yeah. in about three weeks. Could be. I'm liking this windup. Russell Martin perhaps is not. Well, it's a Donaldson doesn't can barely bear to look. It's a, it's a different look, and uh, maybe that Princeton education clicked in and said, "Hey, I, I got to come up with something a little different. Let me put a little thought into this." So wind up would make uh, somebody like Dizzy Dean proud. But that's the way they wound up years ago. As he winds up, the ball is in his glove, but his pitching hand is not in contact with it until he brings the glove back up near his chest. He has the ball set in the glove where he wants to grip it on the seams. There it is. And the 0-2. Might have a hard time getting a call strike three. The tying run to the plate. It's been a crazy kind of game. Two strikeouts, and then and then you hit what yeah. could have been the last guy. Trying to throw that curve, and Martin might have stuck his arm out at it purposely. You see uh, Jimenez pointing at him, but uh, as long as you're in the batter's box and you don't put that arm into the into the strike zone, you're saying, hey, take one for the team. And he's got the guard there. Yeah, so. years, years ago, you didn't have that guard, but. Uh, yeah, let it hit him. Can't blame Russell Martin for it. He's trying to get the Blue Jays a base runner. Now, if he sticks that elbow into the strike zone, that's a different thing. Okay, so Kevin Pillar, 12 homers for the year, a double in five trips today. Martin was running. They weren't holding him. He'll have to come back. It's out of play. So apparently he can have second base if he wants it. You have second and third as far as the Rangers are concerned. They're not going to make any effort to move out of their position. Well, they calculate that guarding the line is worth more than the possibility that there might be a bouncing ball up the middle and the only play would be at second base and then they'd wish he had stayed at first. So he goes again. It's a called strike and he takes second base but now the Jays are down to their final strike. I'm sure in Ross Ollendorf's mind right now it's like well I had this situation a week ago one strike away.
Nearly 50,000 here facing the grim possibility that this may be the last game they'll see. It's over. Wow. They need to win two at Texas to play another game in Toronto. Well, there, there wasn't anything lucky about the Rangers' two wins. I mean, they played baseball. Advanced runners, great relief pitching. How good must Ross Ollendorf feel right now? He struck out the side with a hit batter mixed in. And there's Prince Fielder. Well, get over that wall, Prince, and don't not, hurt yourself. Not exactly Edwin Moses clearing no, the no. hurdle, but. <laughs> well, a sad day for Blue Jay fans. They've been wrapped around this team the whole season, and uh, not that it's over, but certainly you mentioned the statistics of coming back from 0 and 2, particularly when you lose those at home. And, uh, great starting effort by Marcus Stroman. Uh, wasted when Mike Napoli tied it up. Only twice, best of five, be it the old LCS format or now the Division Series format, only twice has a team lost the first two games at home and then come back to win the series. The 2012 Giants did it against Cincinnati and then went on and won the World Series from there. And the Yankees in 2001 did it against Oakland and got as far as the seventh game of the World Series before losing to Arizona. It's happened eight times in 71 instances, but six of the eight teams who did it were headed home. Toronto's about to go on the road. Let's take a look now at the master pass by MasterCard moment of the game. All right. Answer Alberto after making an error early on, a timely hit, and Rugnet Odor has been a terror on the base pass. Reckless abandon, sliding, rolling, diving, and he scores the lead run. Let's go down to Ken Rosenthal. Kenny. Thanks, Thanks Bob. Bob. I'm here with two of the Rangers heroes, Hanser Alberto and Rugnet Odor. Rugnet, let's start with you. 14th inning, two outs, nobody on. What are you thinking against Latroy Hawkins? I mean, he's a great pitcher. I'm just trying to get on base for my team and, it's, and win the game, and I, I did it. Second base. How worried were you that that call might be reversed and you would be called out? I know, I know, I, know we, I was safe because I never get out of the base, so I was normal, normal. Okay, now finally on Hanser's hit, how close did you think it would be at the plate? I mean, he hit it pretty, pretty, pretty hard. So I run 100% to home play, and I, I tried to make a good, good slide in home play, and I scored the run. Now you had two great slides at home today. How did you learn to do it that way? I mean, you know what? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just trying to get safe in home play, and I just, I just do it. Rugnet, thank you very much. Congratulations, Hanser. Okay, 14th inning, two on, two out. You're facing Hawkins. What did you want to do there? Oh, you know, first of all, I want to thank God for the opportunity for that moment. It's just very special. Uh, you know, I've been off for four in the game, but you know, in postseason, all all the back is important. You know, I just go a bat, 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 and you know, I just put a good swing on. I was looking for fastball all the time, and he threw me. And I just put my best swing, and you know, we got good result. Now, Rugnet said that that ball was hit hard. He wasn't sure he could score. Did you think he would score? Uh, yeah, but I, that's what I told him. Hey, why you not run fast? Why you not run as soon as you see <laughs> when I hit the ball? I say, hey, I run fast as I can, but you know, just. We, we give the W that that's all important, you know, hopefully we continue to play the game like that and go to the next uh, round. The error early in the game, it led to two runs. You're a very good fielder. How much did that bother you? Uh, you know, that made me feel sad, but you know, like that's going to happen in the game. You know, just got to keep my head up and, you know, be ready for, for the next round ball. So, and you see after that, a lot of round balls coming. I was ready and I get it, you know. That's all about it, like finish a play. Last thing, you're replacing Adrian Beltre. He may be going to the Hall of Fame. What has he told you? Uh, he just, you know, I was looking him up every time from the third base. He moved me, he put me in the right spot. Uh, you know, he, he just told me, hey, play the game like you've been playing. You know, be you, don't be, don't, don't try to do too much. And, you know, that made me feel better, just like play my game. I know I'm replacing him, but, uh, like, you know, I got to play my game. Congratulations. Thank you. Bob, back to you. Ken, thanks. Well, Kitty, 
14 innings. Four hours and 57 yeah. minutes. We saw the youngest player in the game, the oldest player in the game. We almost brought Albert Bell out of retirement. <laughs> a little bit of everything. Well, what I enjoyed about it is you had to be at this game. I call it a not in the box score game. We got all these statistics that tell you there what you players can do or mm -hmm. will do, but this was just sheer baseball player ability when you watch Odor, what he did, some of the plays in the field, and it got dull for a while, but the Rangers, they deserve to win with the way they played. How about the other Rogned Odor, the brother of the guy well, we yeah. saw today, who's also in the Rangers farm system in the offseason? How often do you think people are going to say, boy, so you were great? He's just going to say, yeah, well, thanks. What if he gets up, plays shortstop, and is Rogned to Rogned for a double play? Wow. <laughs> a roguish possibility. Yeah, well, th this was fun. You feel bad for the Blue Jays fans. Uh, they've really supported this team. And waited a long time. Yeah. And, uh, and who's to say they yet. won't come back, but yeah. it'll take some doing. Okay, Sunday at 4 Eastern, ALDS Game 3, only on MLB Network in the other American League series. The Royals heading to Houston for Game 3 in that one, the telecast presented by Geico. And you can watch Game 2 of that series, which, when last we checked, the Astros were leading. It's currently in progress on FS1 with Matt Baskirjian, John Smoltz, and A.J. Pruszynski on the call. Coming up next on MLB Network, it's MLB Tonight with Greg Amsinger, Mark DeRosa, and Dan Plesak. For Jim Cott and Ken Rosenthal, Bob Costa saying so long from the Rogers Center in Toronto. And thanks for watching this Division Series telecast on MLB Network, presented by GEICO. So long, everybody.